right. My boy came in town to visit me. The wonderful, all the way from Connecticut. Guesser 3A, thank you for coming. I'm, this Good is a once. Here. Good to be here. And this is a once in a lifetime chance I get to do this. I pulled rank on this one. I said, hey, man, <laughs> he doesn't do interviews with anybody. And if he does, it's super rare. And this time I'm like, nah, man, we ain't seen each other for years. I think we really need to have a deep conversation. We want to hold it because we got kids now. And since we got a bunch of kids, including my kids right there, Reza and Sina, they're here to ask questions too because they've been involved in my life for so long. He has become almost like a mythological figure that they always ask questions about. And today we're going to ask some of those questions. We may get into the meat of it. And uh, if anything, it's going to be a whole lot of goofy stuff that we always talk <laughs> Just about. Just see where here. it goes. Some of it might not make sense <laughs> to everybody, but it's not going to be all graffiti. It's not going to be all graffiti because at the end of the day, we went through life together, not just about graffiti, but a whole lot about just life in general. So without that, without further ado, my guy, Gesser. What's up? Thanks. Good to be here, you guys. Bro, <laughs> we just had a long day today. I'm super sweaty. I'm so happy. That Let's toast iced coffees, bro. Let's toast iced coffees. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have a thing for iced coffees, and this is a, a, a must. So I would like to basically start from the beginning with you, brother. One yeah. of the things that uh, I think a lot of people don't know about you and me is kind of how we got together and met. And one thing I know, there's usually us three before it was me, Kem, and Gess. Unfortunately, Kem is not here to uh, be a part of this conversation, but... My brother guess is so. We're actually going to get it from his perspective. Tell me how you remember well, it. 1998, Paint Lewis. Uh, we went down there for the first time. Uh, it was hot as hell, but we knew it was going to be. But we just figured, let's go out there. So we go to Paint Lewis. Um, for those of you familiar with the jam, big ass wall, hot as hell, tons of writers, and. Um, it was a cool place to be because it's, you know, from a modern day perspective, it's like, well, you know, what's the big deal? You see a whole lot of people. I see your, there, there was no on, I mean, there was online, there was like 12 ounce profit, yeah. but you didn't have that steady stream of what people were up to right, every right. five seconds. You would have to wait for a magazine to come out every, you know, twice a year, right. three times a year at the most. People didn't have that steady update. So when you would go to a jam like St. Louis in the Midwest, it was just kind of like, it was like the Warriors and uh, when all the freaking gangs showed up. <laughs> Everybody comes from around the country. We came to this one giant jam and it was cool actually seeing in person yeah. people's graph from all over the place. So long story short, we're in Paint Louis, St. Louis. And that's where Kem and I ran into you. We saw you painting and approached you and started talking. Mm -hmm. One thing led to another. That was 98. And I think we, Kem and I invited you to come visit us in Boston in 99. Yeah. And so we met, met in St. Louis and it was just kind of like exchanged info. Mm -hmm. From that point, it was, came to Boston and we started painting. Yeah, the dope thing was when you guys uh, came up to me out in that jam, I think I was already in a bit of a, of a uh, how do you say it, almost like a PTSD kind of mode because that was my second uh, Paint Lewis, I feel like. Uh, and yeah, it was my second. And the one before it, the jam was very loaded with a lot of egos, a lot of 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 beef a lot of different types of like you know tumultuous things that had went on on that and so i was very leery about who was coming up to me and talking to me and stuff like that because you already knew you were already, already been through it one year that, yeah. that was our first year but you, so you've been there you were there already it, yeah it was and, and i had a really rough time but like the whole thing about it was at that time it was like since it wasn't like it is now where everyone's all like, man, we're friends. Let's hook up and let's oh, paint no. it beautiful. <laughs> nah, they, they literally were on some bullshit. 
not everybody wanted to be approached. Hell no. Nobody, the, fa- the thing is, you know, now it's like, oh, wow, you do graph. Yeah, me too. The, the gr- interest in graph alone was not enough of a common denominator for us to be instant buddies. Yeah. Some people are just like, oh, you like graph? Okay, good. Like graph over there. Yeah. Don't approach me. And so I understand, yeah. you know, I know what you're like. You, you don't vibe with, you don't mesh with everybody. No. And I mean, graph was almost like being uh, a graph bigot in that type <laughs> of like thing. You're yeah. going in there and so many different like mindsets. But uh, one of the biggest things was you guys were just very cool, like as like personality wise, yeah. which was weird to me because I'm running with dudes that are just like, and I'm a, and I'm a country bumpkin. I'm from Atlanta. I'm from ATL. We, this is Georgia. We're yeah. not on some like, this is not LA. This is not New York. And of course, how that was back then. Yeah. We, I was just, man, I'm, I don't know anything. And this is St. Louis, misery, M- misery, misery, <laughs> yeah, misery. goddammit. And it was, it was what it was, you know? And um, so we're over here trying to understand the, the, the atmosphere that was going on uh, in that place. But you guys weren't like, you weren't like standoffish to me. Matter of fact, Kem was really, really like almost like a Pokemon. Like this dude <laughs> came up. Yeah, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. I was like, whoa, kid. What yeah. the? Hey, how you doing? Hey, man. Yeah, yeah, just hey. super excited. You know super what I mean? <laughs> to like get out and like you're, you're seeing people you don't normally see. And one of the biggest things is that like you guys actually had style. That was a weird one. I mean, there were a lot of things going on in St. Louis, but style style is one of the ones that wasn't in abundance there was people in abundance yeah but not style in abundance so when i saw you guys i was like oh dang where are y'all from you know because there was a little bunch of midwest dudes that just weren't good yeah i think when y'all showed up i had like almost like a taste of that east coast like understanding of what we know as good graffiti yeah especially at the time connecticut where y'all you from yeah you actually had that Connecticut flavor and a lot of that uh, Connecticut knowledge. And I was yeah. Like, and the thing is like, you know, Kim and I were teamed up and a lot of people thought I was from Boston <laughs> only yeah. because anytime we went anywhere, right. I would drive to Boston, meet up with Kim and that's where we would drive from. Yeah. Everybody just thought I was from Boston. I'm never, I've never from Boston. Yeah. You yeah. Know, I was always from Connecticut yeah, yeah. and um, Connecticut, you know, for people that weren't aware of what was going on, in the nineties in Connecticut, it was like in between Boston and New York. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Connecticut, Connecticut, when I started was just, you know, like a, like a style experimental laboratory, like a lot of just people trying different things. There was a lot going on with graph and it was just kind of a good place to like get a start because I saw a lot of, a lot of work that got me hyped, you know, like high quality, high quality pieces and everything. And, um, so yeah, out of Con- Connecticut. Out of Connecticut, yeah. yeah. There was a, <clears throat> Connecticut itself had a movement. It had a movement going oh, yeah. on that I did not expect to be as powerful as it was until I actually kind of like left the atmosphere of Atlanta. Yeah. And kind of just started like in I found myself after I kind of like made my way, I found like this this other uh this other plateau of what the world sees. And yeah. Connecticut had already made quite a bit of a of a of a imprint so you guys were in coming from a place that i was like oh shoot i'm it's kind of a sleepy little spot yeah so yeah man and and when y'all went now i know how my experience went in paint lewis mm-hmm. how did y'all's go uh honestly it was it was so like we didn't walk around and talk to a million people because the wall was so damn long it was like 112 <laughs> degrees yeah. i don't want to go anywhere like it yeah. was it, you know, it was a mission to finish your piece. Yeah. And um, it was just kind of, you know, it was cool to go out there. And I just liked seeing, you know, everybody's different styles. People came from all over the place. There were some guys from the West Coast. You remember the, the character? Somebody literally had, like, the T-shirt in the trash can and said, I'm oh. going back to Cali. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. they weren't feeling it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, it was uh, 
it was hot as hell and it was just yeah. kind of it was it was cool to see that many people from all different places but the the reality of it was i didn't meet a million people mm -hmm. like you would think there's so many writers there wow you probably talked to a billion like i didn't I didn't have like, I never had like the black book that I wanted everybody to sign. Yeah. I didn't walk up and down the wall. It was too damn hot. You didn't um, have it because you didn't want to do it or you didn't have it because you just didn't have it. No, I just, I never really did that. Uh, you know what I mean? I never, I never really had like the black book to collect. Um, in hindsight, I think it would have been cool to like kind of be like a timeline of all the people I've met along the way. Right. But I, I really quickly was just like, look, if I don't, if I don't really do it, I don't even want to kind of do it. I, I don't it. want to have some of them. It's just, so I just didn't do it. Right. And um, so it was kind of cool that we met you because I didn't meet a ton of people over there. Right. You know, I think after we went back. Yeah, that's that right. Was, that was after our first visit. I don't want to skip so far ahead. Yeah, no, no. That, that I, <laughs> I remember. And at that point, when I finally, once <clears throat> Payne Lewis has ended, <laughs> once Payne Lewis has ended, I'd find myself, all right, forget Payne Lewis. Let's go to Boston. Yeah. What do you remember uh, when we actually linked up uh, out there? Uh, I mean, I remember you came out. We we started out with like a warm up wall. Yeah, I think it was like in Framingham on the on the tracks. Was that one? Yeah, on the tracks. It was right? in Framingham. It was on, on a wall back there, and we did we talked about that wall today. Was that that blue one? Yeah. yeah so we did two D pieces on that, and then um, okay, yeah. So we did like. The purple fill one. Purple fill with, with yellow little, outlines on the, and you did the robots. The robots in between, yep. and then we just had a ball. Yep. I had a bald head at that time. Yep. Then then yeah. we went out one night to some, I forgot what Did we get along? We, yeah, Right at did. the gate. We did, yeah, we, right? yeah, we did. I felt we did. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yo, is it weird that no, I'm we, actually getting along? No, with, we, got, we, my, we got along. It was. Out of a short. It, it worked. Of course. It, listen, anytime you go. To stay with somebody you don't, yeah, you don't know there's right. gonna be like a you hope it works because it's gonna be yeah. awkward as hell <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean it's gonna yeah. be like oh wow you really like damn when are you when do you how long you stay like you yeah, know what i mean it's, we, when are you leaving uh it worked uh we did that wall and then that was the year that we did the the uh atlantis wall yeah the the big atlantis under wall. and that was a big freaking wall right in uh mission hill yeah yeah um, that was wild me, dude. you Chem and yeah, pure and pure mm -hmm. um and pure he he came you know he came from the midwest like just earlier that year yeah and um he was actually one of the people just a side note um he was one of the people that inspired me to start painting larger pieces okay because i remember the very first time he met up with us it was me chem and pure mm -hmm. we went to go paint at the trestles in framingham and he was real quiet dude was like Real methodical, had his shit, wasn't like super bouncing around, just quiet and did his thing. Cam and I are painting and we look over and Connecticut pieces were mainly kind of small in Connecticut at the oh, time man. too. Mm -hmm. Very, very chock full of technique. Yeah. But that's because with a small piece, you can focus on technique. So mm -hmm. we're painting our pieces and I look over and this always stuck with me. I look over at Pure and he's painting his piece and he's already ahead of us. And it's like two and a half times the size of our pieces. It's right. big. And I look over and I'm like, I was like, wow, like, dude, you're painting a big piece. He goes, I'm not painting big. I'm painting normal. <laughs> he goes, you're painting a small piece. Uh, that's and I was just like, I was just kind of like, yeah. That's a very good way of putting you know, it. You're right. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And that's He's like, very, I'm not painting big. I'm painting normal. As a very and pure way of saying it. And I'm, and I wanted to be like, no, -uh, this is normal. I'm like, no, <laughs> dude, I was wrong. Yeah, I, it just it it helped, it basically opened up my, my eyes to like a different perspective. Like I didn't think of it that mm -hmm. way. I just kind of. But the thing is, I realized that painting bigger helped stretch out the style and do everything. But yeah. So back to going to the big Mission Hill wall yeah, um, yeah. <clears throat> was. I don't even know. I, Kem got the wall. Yeah. permission to do the wall it was, it was right the back of a grocery right yeah it was on the back of a market yeah. and it was pretty damn big and this was like there was no like hey i got sponsored cans or i got no. a a deal with a pallet or hey i got a forklift yeah, like no. i don't even know i don't even remember i don't know where we get the ladders from i don't know i don't remember talking about colors i don't remember talking yeah. i don't know where we got the paint 
Yeah. It just was like, let's do an underwater scene. And I remember at the time, mm -hmm. late nineties, like meeting you got me super pumped to like, you caught my, and a lot of people's attention on 3d no doubt. and anybody, no, not, I don't want to say anybody, a large portion of graffiti writers either tried 3d in the late nineties mm -hmm. or thought about trying 3d in the late nineties, mm -hmm. or at least noticed it because it was like, Late nineties for anyone that wasn't around and says, What are you talking like three D pieces were Yeah, they were turned the from rage. head. It yeah. really shook because it broke the mold of the mm -hmm. fill it in, outline it. Yeah. And um so I looked at that and it was like a real challenge. So it kind of put it I was pumped to try my hand at it. Yeah. And um regardless of how it turned out, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> It turned it's out tough great. To, it's tough to jump into mm -hmm. because, you know, it's, it's just a whole different way of painting than just filling in an outline. Mm -hmm. And we all did 3D pieces, and I thought it was just like, you know, it was it was Even cool challenged to, pure. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was, I mean, we kind of pressed he him was, a bit at on At first, it. he wasn't feeling it, mm -hmm. um, but he did do, he did like he a did diamond, diamond bevel. Mm -hmm. He did more of like a hybrid, yeah. which I thought was really cool because pure was doing like these flared out open-ended pieces where yeah. the fill would leave the outline, yeah, which still a lot of people weren't doing it. But mm -hmm. so he took that and I like that he did that because he didn't force something that wasn't totally him. Right. Like he took his style that existed yeah. and, um, you know, found a way to 3 d -ify it. Right. <laughs> you know, right. Um, it looked good in his style though. It did. It worked. I mean, it, it really did. It wasn't, it wasn't like a herky jerky, uh, yeah. you know, Forrest Gump with his things on. He put like these little, like almost like these little divots yeah. in the bevel. Yeah. And it made it look like And then he like had organic, they, they, yeah. they sh it shifted from crisp to started to get yeah. organic and break off. Yeah. And he was able to adhere to it in a way that I, that, that kind of like shocked me because I was like, okay, he didn't want to do it. Yeah. But he still was able to stylistically work it. He to said, where, I don't want to, but fine. If that's what we're doing, fine, I'll do it. And but the it. fine worked out. And I feel he was happy about it too. He was. Yeah, you know, I, was. I don't know if it was, if he was happy because of the result or the actual journey into trying it, but he was stoked on the end because yeah. that final photo of us going, yeah, yeah, up on, the, up on the roof. Yeah. Even the reporter showed up. We gave them all fake names. <laughs> I was Brent Williams. Brent Williams. <laughs> I think I was uh, Michael Rodriguez, Mike yeah, Rodriguez. Yeah, we said, we, <laughs> you know, the 3A crew reconnoitre or something every year or whatever. We, we told them some nonsense. But, yeah. And that old and man, it, like, pointing up to it. And, yeah. And, and yeah. I, I think that those are – Mission Hill was my first foray into uh, Boston. Yeah. And later uh, I started, you know, when I came to see you guys a few other times, I'd kind of gallivant through – Boston, like, yeah. and found out really what like Southies are and what like <laughs> mass holes are yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. I started to learn a little bit. Yep. But I think I, I, I experienced something different whenever I would go over to Connecticut because it's like a different type. Like it's, it's so close and it's different. So different. Like Connecticut is not Boston. Not at it's all. So different. And it's mm -hmm. like an hour and a half away. And do you feel like, do you feel like most of your graffiti uh, influence and strength came from solely Connecticut, and then you ventured to Boston and and I <clears throat> stylistically, I don't think Boston steered anything I was doing. Sure, I don't think I took anything from Boston. I don't think it it didn't. Now there were guys that got me really pumped early on. Mm -hmm. Some of the early Boston guys, you know, like Rise and and yeah, Sly, right. um, those guys, like because the very first. The very first graffiti publication that I ever saw that got put in my hand, spray can art, and it was a skills magazine. So skills, wow. skills so I saw those pieces, skills. but still it wasn't, it didn't really inform anything except maybe some of my very earliest pieces, but the first few years, it, it was mainly, it was mainly Connecticut, like yeah. stuff in Connecticut. And, um, a lot of a lot of my early style, my style foundation um, came from three uh, original members I put in three A or Nell Five Nell and five. Nis. And Nell Five and Nis. Shout out to they, Nell Five and Nis. Yeah, these guys um, took me just 
they didn't teach me. They didn't say, hey, look, this is how you do a letter. Look, do it. No, they didn't teach me. They just were n older guys, nice enough to let a toy hang out with them. And I watched. You know what I mean? And I looked at their sketches. Their, Nell had piles of black books just filled with outline after outline after outline. Were they significantly older than you? Um, they weren't. At the time, it felt like it. <laughs> like to me, to me at the time when I met them, I was 18. Oh. And I thought these dudes, to me, they were like grown men. They were dudes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I felt like I was still in high, my senior year of high school. Right. Um, but yeah, I would say like, like maybe like seven to nine years older. Oh. Like almost a decade older. Yeah. And that's know? like literal. But like the thing is, I started in the 90s. They started in the 80s. So wow. anyone that was like, whoa, you started in the eighties, like you're you were already doing your thing. So Oh wow. Yeah. But their their styles, um I got a lot of foundation from. Even the way that I do my S yeah. that I always have is a lot of people do like a curvy traditional S. Yeah. My way of doing that like triangular down and back, that's mm -hmm. all from all from this and now. Oh, you know what I mean? That's yeah. like that set my idea of what a that kick out on the S that I love to do was like kind of attributed to them. Well, that's beautiful. I didn't know that. That's I mean, you know, shout out to Nis. Like I always wondered like where he was as far as because I didn't see him a lot. Like, yeah, I don't know if he was like doing other things when we started to really run around. But, yeah. you I mean, know, he like, was always busy. He would he would do a lot of quick pieces. Yeah. Um, would start a lot of stuff and not finish a lot of stuff. Sorry, Ness. Um, I knew it was over if we're piecing. Mm -hmm. He walked down the wall and started catching tags. I knew it was over. Oh, it just yeah, didn't I, I knew he was done. It's okay. But he he um he did a lot of pieces. Did a lot of just had a lot of style. Yeah, but you were driven. You know, yeah. since you being more driven, I often wondered when the fact that you realized that you were being so that you were driven and you were kind of out there trying to get it in how did your drive end up you meeting up with kem because um that's the legendary all right, so team where y'all got together I, I started in 93 mm -hmm. 94 was met Nis and nell 95 is when I realized I kind of wanted to start my own crew because the couple of guys I started with early on, it was fun for a couple of summers for them and they kind of fell off. Um, nine, so 95, I started, I decided to start my own crew and I started 3A. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't meet Kem until 97. And it was at a hardcore show in Providence, Rhode Island. That's oh, right. You that's met him at a show. I met him at a hardcore show. Oh, shoot. Yeah. You don't remember who the band was? Uh, yeah, Bands. probably yeah, probably Temperance, Strife, Snapcase, like our favorite, OG like ones. straight edge bands. You know, always going to straight edge hardcore shows. Wow. Um, but that's and that's the thing too. Like a lot of people, um, don't realize. Like a lot of times, like they think like I'm a hip hop dude. I must be. I like do graffiti. I must be a hip hop guy. Yeah. Yeah, I like hip hop, but that wasn't how it was it was skateboarding and hardcore shows yeah. that brought me to the areas where graffiti was being done right there and was a lot of skateboarding graffiti and a lot of hip-hop graffiti but not a lot of people take into account punk and yeah hardcore yeah graffiti. punk show punk shows and hardcore it's and i think there's more people than more writers got their start that way than a lot of people realize How'd you recognize, like, if you were at a hardcore show, such an anomaly as, okay, this guy's a hardcore person or so on and so forth, and they, hey, wait a minute, who's this little guy over here? He seems like he might be interested in graffiti. You mean, how did I meet Kem? How did you see anyone like that, let alone it being Kem, I mean, obviously? The funny thing is, back then, like, like now if I go out, I, I'm very, I try to not advertise that I'm a writer. Right. You know what I mean? Like sure. I, I want just leave me alone. I'm trying to live my life. Right. Back then people wore it. Like they <laughs> wanted you to know there were dudes, the, the <laughs> there were dudes tags. that had like an empty can in their backpack rattling oh. like a little, Hey, hey I'm a graffiti writer. Here. Uh -huh. Like 
people wore the tags like on their back. Like yeah. it was no, that's true. You, yeah. you could, it was like a uniform. Like you could spot, like there's a writer. Right. You know what I mean? Um, I so, thought that was more prevalent in the skateboard scene, it, but in yeah, that it one? was, but even there too, you can spot, you can spot who were the writers. Yeah. I mean, they, it's kind of like, there was no social media. You wanted to meet another writer, mm -hmm. not not to meet other writers, just so you can say who you are to. The, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. it's like you can't wait for them to ask you what you write, so you can tell them. It's like don't every come on. So it, it was kind of um, you know that's kind of what it was. It was easy to spot people, but I didn't like say, hey, look, there's a graffiti writer. Let me go talk to him. It, right. it was through. I met somebody and then somebody, it was Pro from Providence. Oh, Pro, Pro. I met Pro in Providence first. At a, at a hardcore show? At the same venue, <laughs> like two what? weeks earlier. That's hilarious. But, but somebody introduced me also to Pro. And then Pro said, hey, meet this guy. And I met Kem. And then from there, Kem and I went to. So Paint Pro actually connected you to Kem? Yes. Oh, yeah. shit. Yep. That at, the, at the hardcore show? At a show? At the, at the hardcore show at the same venue. At the same venue. But like two weeks later. I see. And the way that I met Pro was my friend Matt, who actually, he owns Only You Tattoo Shop in Atlanta. Oh, he is, shout out to he Matt. He was in my wedding party. You stood oh, next yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to um, Matt. He, he got me into graffiti. He is the one when uh, I was, I would be at his house in Rhode Island in the summers. Yeah. And he basically um, introduced me to grab. Like he was on it first. And showed me like okay we went to the RISD tunnel i saw a graph and instantly i was like yo i like this right you know what i mean and um how many years in were you at about the time as you ran into uh to chem five how um, many years you've been four four years because oh, so i started in 93 and i met him in 97. how many years was he in probably uh probably two years like 95 something okay like, early 95. so was there a little bit of a like a like a learning curve uh for the both of you, once you guys started actually like hitting hitting the ground, running together as learning a team? curve be between us working together, working together, getting uh, attaining style, attaining um, technique. It was funny because we 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 because Nis is gone at this time, right? He's not gone. He's st he's still in the mix. He's okay. still there, but he didn't want to paint as much as I wanted to paint. Okay. I wanted to paint yeah. all the time. Right, you know what I mean? And I had not much going on in my life. I was yeah. young. I had the time. You know what I mean, he already had responsibilities. He had kids. You know, he didn't get to work. Right. Um, I wasn't worried about that at the time. Right. So the first time that Kem and I made plans to go paint, we actually showed up at a, a spot. It was funny because we we opened our bags. We had the same exact color schemes without talking. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. And we did those pieces, and then a week later, we were like, "Hey, let's do." Um, Let's do a production, and that's when we did the whale production yeah. in Providence, the two killer whales. Right. Um, I don't know how we came up with it. I think it was like we got the wall right on the street, and the place said, well, we want something more than letters. So it was kind of like – Kind of a no It was like a compromise. Like we got to do something else. So that's – Something that's like let the art kind of like grease the wheels for the graph. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. And, I mean, that's a common thing now. But uh, at that time, it wasn't as common – uh in most of the united states but that one was a nice little uh because i remember it very well i was like that that's very nice compositionally i think anybody would like that yeah but it was like little hand, little it, if you think about it it was 70 percent mural 30 percent graffiti our pieces were at the top right and they were hollows but then again but i feel whatever. like y'all were trying to challenge yourself to be able to do productions because productions was the 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 everything the of the day productions were what were catching people's eye and there was definitely like if you want to exist at a higher level that was kind of like you challenge yourself to do that and honestly i think at the time i wanted to see like could i the measure back then was can you make something look real yeah yeah if it looked real real equals oh you're good at it mm -hmm. you know what i mean um i think y'all did that wall who did the m the main uh artistic um realism stuff who did the orcas and who did you know the background or the i i can't remember honestly mm -hmm. i think it, i want to say it was like an equal equal, equal yeah. effort mm -hmm. um 
I can't honestly say, oh, I did more. Sure, or sure, he did sure. more. Um, I think it was more about I, the but question. But the thing is, there was I just the one thing I remembered, and the the thing that was cool about meeting up with him was how much open back and forth there was. There was no like, no, it's going to be like this and you're going to fuck like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And then from there, we just kind of, our personalities just meshed. Mm -hmm. It worked. And from there, we just kind of, you know, just painted as much as possible and just Mm -hmm. kind of like, just kind of leap, just leapfrogged and just kind of helped. Right. Like we we would do something and I feel like, I feel like our styles um, evolved together. Right. But in different ways, we kind of bounced ideas off because if you follow our work throughout those years, there were a lot of similarities. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was just like, and it wasn't one way. It was like, I would do something and he'd be like, Oh, I like that. But then he would bring Mm -hmm. it here. And then I'd say, well, let's do this and bring it here. And it just kind of, right. It was just, it was just good. Yeah. Yeah. You, You boys had saw that. Uh, production that uh, he did out in my photo box that's all inside my house and what did y'all think of it when y'all saw that uh, I'll tell you my thoughts on the production it truly really, like inspired me because I'm, I grew up always looking at my dad's work and my dad since he is 3 um, he would always talk about you guys Never seen y'all's work, you know. So as soon as we we found the photos in the photo box, we just dug through, looked for all the productions, and found every single one of them. That's cool. So first, you you heard the stories first. Yeah, I heard everything. And then, about. yeah, you saw you heard, and then you saw that that all the pics, yeah. the shoebox photos. That's cool. The shoe box was quite a swollen box of a number of different people that mm-hmm. uh, that I consider friends even to this day. Yeah, and uh, a good chunk of that stuff was y'all because y'all were very, very good at keeping up with me and keeping me informed of what you guys were doing. Yeah, I didn't have as much of a tenacity as you guys did of being able to like document the stuff y'all were doing as much as what I was doing, which is was a wonderful thing to catch because I would get your package or I would get a, the the letters and I would see what you guys are doing. I go, oh, I got to do something like this. Yeah. Maybe we can do this. Or it would uh, make me want to take a trip out to where you guys. So I found myself yeah. venturing over there more often. Yeah. Uh, and that was the really, really cool thing about it all because you guys were active, active. And your, and your visit like put wind in our sails too. Like yeah. we got hyped. Like when you let, like we did that wall. Then when you left, it was just kind of like we just wanted to do more and more and more. Yeah, and more. I mean, that was the cool thing about uh, that time for us is that when we went and like got together, it was like a real adventure. Yeah. Even in, the, okay, it's in the backyard, but it feels like, okay, we're on the moon or something like yeah. that. We're in another dimension. We're over here like checking out yeah. different places and different spaces. So that's the, what's that? Oh, no, I was just going to. Uh, speaking of adventures and stuff like that, uh, I saw this production with uh, you, Cam, and uh, my dad, but also Rex too. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that was in Europe. Yeah. So that whole trip, could you tell us about the whole how how they how y'all planned it? What did y'all do before the packing or? Up? Yeah. Um. That's <laughs> speaking of that. Listen, <laughs> that that one question could be a two hour conversation because a lot happened on that trip. Um, it was 1999. Yeah. Um, and just to give it some context for like if anybody watches this later, that's younger. and it's like, whoa, what's the big deal to give it some context? Um, the late 90s. The, there was a big spotlight on Europe. Oh, yeah. Europe, you know, Switzerland, Germany, huge, huge spotlight. It's like, you know, a lot of the 3D writers came out of there. A lot of production writers came out of there. There was a lot, there was, you know, the European, all the spray paint. Like we didn't have acts. We didn't have European paint yet here available everywhere. We literally were mixing Krylon 
if you had a purple, you had one and you made it. Yeah, you made it. You know, it. It, so seeing what they were doing with like a million colors and everything. So back to what I was saying, Europe was really in the spotlight at that time. So for us to say like, listen, let's freaking go paint in Europe. Yeah. You know? And Europe was really in the spotlight too. And by and large, especially uh, to your point earlier, that the 3D element was so popular, so insanely interesting in the graffiti world that they wondered where most of the, 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 the heavy hitters were coming from. And yeah. they were coming from Europe, yeah. namely Germany, especially because names like Dime, Lumet, you know, Hesh at the time, Hesh. Dime and Hesh were the duo. Right. And then what they would do is they would come to America and link up with crews from uh, New York. Yeah. And they just would produce. And again, productions was the uh, the meal of the day. Productions, their productions in in uh, collaboration with the New York writers, the stuff looked incredible, like nothing the world has ever seen, which caused people like us who weren't from New York or stuff like that to venture out and see what all the hoopla is about. Yeah. So we we basically wanted to go. We wanted to go to New um, Germany. We wanted to go to Germany, mm -hmm. but we said, listen, let's just make a trip out of make a trip out of it, make like a tour. And, um, so we basically, it was totem Kem, myself and Rex two from yep. Tennessee. Yep. And, Tennessee. uh, I think Kem met him at paint Lewis. Right. That's where he met him. He was, they were painting, Down his there. crew was painting to the right of us. Right. So they made the connection. And, and he was uh, doing that magazine show and prove. He was doing show and prove magazine. He was going to come along and I think the intent of him coming on the trip was that he was going to document the whole graffiti, the whole tour in Europe, and then do like a feature in the magazine. Um, it didn't end up happening, but uh, we're so we we basically the whole trip was over three weeks. It was yeah. like it was November until like December fourth or something like that. Sometimes I forget how long that was. It was long. It was long. And it was in cold weather. And um, the crazy thing is, is like I was just telling Totem the other day that I don't think at the time we didn't realize what a freaking mission it was because oh, yeah. we, we, we were so hyped to be there. We didn't know, like, you know, this is pre-cell phone. You don't, you don't DM someone, hey, hey, yo, I'm in Germany. Who want to paint? There's none of that. Like nobody was coming to help you. No one knew who you, <laughs> you were there. You didn't know where to get paint. You can't go, oh, where's the shop? Google it. Oh, I'll get an Uber. None of that shit have, uh, existed. It was all legwork. Yeah. You, it was all on you. Nobody was coming to help you. You know what I mean? So we, we basically just, but we were so freaking hyped just to be like, yo, we are in Europe to paint. Let's go. So we brought four gallons of rolling paint on the plane. <laughs> when you could do that. <laughs> when you could do that. Um, and we just started out. It was a week in Amsterdam, um, a week in Germany, and then a week in Basel, Switzerland. We did have a connect in Basel. Side, yeah. side 3A. Shout, shout, yep, side. shout out to side 3A. Um, he was in Basel, Switzerland. So it was, it was a week in Amsterdam, week in Germany, um, week in Basel. And then back to Amsterdam to fly out at the end. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that trip was one of the most exciting, harrowing, you know, trying <laughs> <laughs> journeys, yeah. uh, adventures that Advent I myself, adventures, <laughs> adventures, adventures, the key word yeah. here as a verb. And this, <laughs> and literally it's, uh, it was one of those moments in that I think in my life, I'm sure in yours too, will never forget. There were so yeah. many, really wild moments that I think as young writers and then as, you know, really close friends at the time, we learned what it really meant to be close, yeah. almost to the point of brothers, if not indeed brotherhood yeah. from a dif different mother. I think one of the things that uh, I find, I thought the trip was going to be almost like like maybe would some would say like a fairy tale, but was more like <laughs> a trial by a, fire. I was, I was going to say it was like a trial. 
it was it was a lot it was a mission i, I would it i want to detail this a little bit i want to pick this apart a little bit <laughs> And, and it's Let's funny start. because there's so many trips that we've taken since then, but this one yeah. is yeah. so many of my stories come from this trip because so much shit happened yeah. on that in that three weeks when we were just, let's go and see what happens and see where we end up and see what we can do. Let's and break that <laughs> apart. Let's, let's, I want you to walk us through this. From from the st from the beginning, and we got the time to talk about yeah. this one. So let's <laughs> let's go down the road. And there might be some hurt feelings, but listen, uh, facts are facts. Yeah, tell me. Uh, I, and th like these are events that happen. It happened, man. Okay, and I'll try to go through. I'm gonna I'm gonna just simply go over how the trip went. Right. It's it's right, just the chips right, fall. Right. You know, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> it's just it it, is this what is it how. Is. This is how it happened. I promise wow. you, this is literally unabashed truth about what really was an adventure for a young graffiti writer named Cam Guest Totem and, of course, Rex, too. Yeah. <laughs> so first off, we actually end up meeting uh, in Amsterdam. Yeah. We all flew separate. We all flew separate. We all kind of flew in and arrived at, at different times. Um, whoever was there first found a crappy hostel yeah. not far away to, to stay at as cheap as possible because we were, there was no credit card. There was no, no ATM. There was yeah. no more money back yeah. home. It's, it's what you got in your the pocket. Money the you money belt. You know what belt. I mean? I was, I was wearing the money belt yeah. as, as yeah. like the shit. I better not lose my stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's, uh, we, we got that mm -hmm. and then. I think we we did um, you, me, and Kem. Rex was getting there later. Yeah, we play, painted at Flavo Park. It was Flavo Park. Flavo Park was a bridge where there was a vert ramp. It was by the river, and it was at the last stop of the tram. Man, you remember that? Yeah, and we wanted to do back jumps on that tram, but it That's didn't right. end up working out or yeah, whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, we did uh, three man production, gray rolling paint. Orange yeah. pieces, uh, white right. outlines, and you did the you did like little sections and everything. So we yeah, did yeah. three pieces there, um, and then on a rainy day, you we were gonna paint, yeah. and it was raining, so we ended up doing chromes up high on little gates, on a little gates, so yeah. they would run. Mm -hmm. That's when the dude at the market put me on the first time. He put me on to. Um, he says, "Oh yeah, why are you not using the bitumen?" And I was like, <laughs> I, I would if I knew what it was. He Please was tar, explain the bitch you man. The tar. It's like yeah, rubberized yeah. undercoating for yeah. cars to outline the chromes. He says it'll outline the chrome no problem in the rain. Yeah. All right, shit, let's try it. I forgot and, that you that they called it, it bitumen. And I still have a I still have a can of it at my house. I brought it home. Burner chromes and bitumen. Yeah, bitumen, <laughs> which is so it's it's tar. It's undercoating. Yeah, that undercoating. So we did that, and then um after that, Rex came into town, and we went to get paint at the thing again. That's when we found the spot. It was like a dead, a dead highway, like in the middle. You look down. Oh yeah, the pit. It was called the pit. The pit. And um we went in there and. Maybe use the our gallon, Amsterdam use folks the, remember that the pit, the or, pit, or or or. And again, uh, it says November ninety nine. Ninety nine. Um, so we went there, did a pieces on a roll at Jungle Green. You did like a, a watermelon color three um, mm -hmm. D piece. Yep, yep. With the dude holding a popsicle and say right. USA and a little bubbles uh, and yeah, and uh, yeah. so uh, and that was that. Yeah, that you was know? that was the beginning of Amsterdam. I think one of the things I remember was. The stories about everyone saying that Amsterdam was a bit of a free for all kind of a town. That was a big, you know, now, of course, weed and everything is legal everywhere. Sure. But back then, the big draw was I'm going to Amsterdam when I smoke. <laughs> and everybody wanted to go to Amsterdam. It was like a, a, an American tourist paradise if you smoked weed right. and wanted to partake in the ladies of the night. But there was a bit <laughs> of a difficulty there because both me and guess are both straight edge neither one of us also were, can and can yeah. Oh, yeah he the was three at the of us we're all straight edge we were all straight edge and we we didn't smoke we didn't drink and still don't smoke and still don't drink yeah. but we didn't do it at that time and that was like the place to do it at that time yeah uh it was it was the extreme of 
that type of culture. And we just were in a place that we weren't there for that, which everyone expects an out of towner to be uh, there for that, whether it be smoking weed or partaking in the women of the night. In the 90s, if you told somebody I'm going to Amsterdam, they understood and they're like, oh, okay, I know why you're going to Amsterdam. But we were strictly there for graffiti. Like that's what, that was our interest there. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that, that was, that was a bit grimy. I remember they had these like canals and all these little, you know, weed shops everywhere. Uh, they're almost like cafes mostly. I think they yeah. called them cafes. Yeah. It and was. then uh, coffee shop. Coffee, coffee shop. shop. We like coffee. That yeah, wasn't yeah, coffee yeah. there. <laughs> no. And uh, the the little red light district and stuff like that, you know, we just didn't partake in that particular aspect because that's just not what we were there for. We were there simply for the love of the art of graffiti. So when we got there, did we meet anyone like writer wise? I can't we, remember anyone from from. I don't think I don't remember running into anybody. Where did we end up going after that? Uh, did, that's when we did we end up meeting with Rex and then heading out? We we met with Rex. Um, Rex painted with us in the pit. That's right. And that was like our last day there. Yeah. And then we <clears throat> Rex loved Amsterdam. Whew. Rex <laughs> Rex was there for Amsterdam, okay? And that's like it was kind of like uh it was listen, anytime Anytime you go somewhere, like you don't want to be the last one there. Oh, and man. he he arrived late. We were already yeah. we were already on the same page, yeah. and then he came in. Yeah. But we weren't we weren't going to the coffee shops or doing anything else. And he wanted to, and we were like, no, let's go walk around and catch tags. And he was like, no, I want to go here. I'm like, all right, well, we'll drop you off here. We're gonna go go bombing the the the, sit, the streets. And we'll come back. For I you. feel like, and, and a memory is coming up into my head. Did he not want to try to go to a donkey show while we were on our mission to go tag? I don't remember looking for something. No, for something. he uh, no, he was distinctly, distinctly uh, looking for the donkey <laughs> show. And at the time, it. we're and then we're younger for sure. So we're like, why do you want to see that particularly when we could just go and mash the streets? Yeah. But he was really on a mission to try to find that donkey show. Yeah. He didn't find it. No. <laughs> no. I, found, I mean, he found I, it other extra We found what we were looking for, man. <laughs> I came there for graffiti. We found plenty of it. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and it was just kind of like, you know, and then I think we were, when we were leaving, we were packing up. It was our last night in, um, you know, in Amsterdam. Or we were going to be leaving to go to Germany. And... That's when I remember he told us, he's like, you guys, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> um, why don't you guys just go on without me for the other leg of the trip and just scoop me on the way back? And we were like, get the, pack your shit, man. Come on, man. Stop talking to you, Kate. Like, I wrote, said that. I said. You, you wanted to come on a graffiti trip with us. You come on a graffiti trip with us. Like, you're going you're gonna to regret this. You yeah. think you, you, you want to stay here. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe he did. Yeah. Well, he's. But we made him come with us anyway. We're like, no way, dude. For anyone who doesn't particularly know who Rex Two is, he's from Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. Nashville, Tennessee. One thing you have to understand about Nashville, Tennessee, in the year 1999, no one's really talking about Nashville particularly. Okay. So he's from a bit of a small town with a lightweight reputation because of Johnny Cash. Other than that, he was really kind of a country bumpkin looking to explore the world just like us. The yeah. only difference was we had a distinct mission and it was to go get our name up, to go do graffiti, to go do what graffiti and writers And see do. what's happening in Europe and get hyped on it. And just to be, absorb what's happening there. Let's get in there. So we <laughs> end up packing our shit and getting the hell up out of Dodge. Where did we go then? We packed up and we jumped on a train and our next stop was Dusseldorf, Germany. Oh boy. Shout out okay. to Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf, Germany. Um, our plan there was, I think, five days. Um, we did, we had one number of somebody to call. I'll get to that. But we jumped on a train. Again, no contact. There's nobody there waiting for us. 
There's nobody like, come stay at my house. I'll get you situated with cans. Here's the not nobody to make any kind of sense of anything. Now, some people are probably thinking, like if you, people are watch this, you're probably thinking, dude, why didn't you like have a plan before you go? The the you know like how Bruce Lee said, "Be water." Yeah. That was our plan. Like, let's yeah. just go and see what happens. Like, we didn't have a plan, mm -hmm. and it was let's just go. We got off the train in Germany at like 2.30 in the morning yeah. in a small town. Nobody was trying to speak English for us, even if yeah, they yeah. knew it. And you get off a train, you got all your stuff. And I remember like some of us stayed behind and someone said, I'm going to go scout. I'm going to yeah. try to find us a place to stay. Yeah. And um, we found a place. And after that, we're just like, okay, well, we got to paint. Yeah. And that's when some real <laughs> That's when the action the, yeah, happened. That's it was just just the trials started. You know what I mean? Like Germany tried to tried to make us quit. <sighs> Germany itself, the weather. Uh, one thing I remember distinctly was the weather being quite difficult to uh to navigate because at the end of the day, whether it be we had four gallons of paint with us, rolling paint. No, we had three. Three. Oh, <laughs> Why did we have three? Because Rex, Guess 3A? Because Rex forgot one of the gallons that he had to carry on the train. And as soon as the doors closed and it went away, he said, the gallon. And it was like a pur mean purple, like a magenta. And for those of you that are wondering, <laughs> what's the big deal about rolling paint? There's no Home Depot in Europe, yeah. okay? Yeah. There's no oops. There's no mist tints. In Europe, in 1999, if you order a color and you don't like it, they don't give you your money back. Yeah. There was no... The whole point is a gallon of white costs like 80 bucks yeah. in Europe. Yeah. So if you're thinking, well, what's the big deal about the rolling paint? The rolling paint was to help us not have to go broke, yeah. spraying our backgrounds away. Which is what they did. And you could not simply go and just buy your rolling paint in Europe. That's plus why the, we brought it. Plus the tinted, they would give you tubes to oh, tint Oh, the it. tubes. It was like just you squeeze yeah. 15 tubes and it's literally like. Of toothpaste. Of maybe an Easter egg pastel shirt. <laughs> like you were not getting saturated magenta. No. And, um, and so, definitely not that purple that he forgot. No. So, you know, the weather, the weather was bad. We needed to find kins. So we were looking for the train station. We heard, I don't know from somewhere. We heard from, oh, I, I know where we heard it. We mm. called Neck CNS. Neck CNS. Neck was the dude that we were hoping would paint with us. But the whole time it was, I'm busy with graphic design. I'm busy. I'm That's busy. I'm right. busy. And I'm like, yo, I know you're busy. Just come out and paint with us for a yeah. freaking day. Yeah. And he never could never show up. But he did show up at the hotel because I have a photo mm -hmm. of him with us. You're doing like that. Yep, 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 um, yep. We do have a photo. Uh, but that was it. And he said, well, the spray cans are in Dortmund. Dortmund, yeah. You have to take a train yeah. to... All right. You have to take a train to Dortmund yeah. to get the cans. Now, we don't know if the shop is open. Yeah. We don't know what the hours are. Just... Train to Dortmund. All right. Um, so we took the train to Dortmund, got off at Central Station. Somebody was like screwing around in their bag for a while, fumbling around with some stuff. So we had like an extra minute of idle time. Of course, what are we going to do? Pick up a pebble, scratch tags on the trash can. Yeah. All of a sudden we start walking. Hey, oh, some dude, come with me downstairs. <laughs> and <laughs> took us down like two floors under the station and the shakedown begins yeah yeah uh yeah. do you have a bank undercover account? rail police were on the platform where we were waiting for rex to finish his goofy <laughs> little arranging his bag because he was in there trying to you know straighten out his diapers and stuff and after he had straightened out his diapers, got his bib right, he got his, uh, his pacifier, we finally got everything together. And before we did that, it was actually not on a trash can. It was actually on a heater bulkhead that okay. had a bunch of dust on it. 
and we were actually taking tags with our finger in the dirt. Okay. I don't know if some other person was writing with a rock, but I took a tag with my pinky finger. Yeah. And next thing you know, either way, it was insignificant <laughs> little. And next thing you know, Inspector Gadget comes out of the woodwork with a trench coat and says, "Come with me." Yeah, they next. didn't even identify themselves as anything. Just it, come with us. Come and we're with walking me. two floors down, and all of a sudden we're in this little station, and it's the 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 back and forth, and we can't understand what's going on, and ultimately. They're saying we're under arrest mm -hmm. for vandalism, and uh, but you can pay right now. And I think they wanted something like seventy. And here comes the grift, <laughs> and here comes here comes the shakedown. Because realistically, we were just a bunch of tourists, graft tourists, but tourists nonetheless. And, and the funniest thing is, I feel like we had this conversation in Amsterdam to say, okay, we're not going to do any trains in germany yeah i thought we had too much risk and not enough money and not enough backup plan really to get, to get hung to up get like hung that. up on something that we knew because at that time painting in germany painting german trains in any form or any fashion was rough you were likely to get caught and we weren't necessarily going for that explicit thing though we were already especially me uh, a seasoned train painter. So I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll back off of that idea. Yeah. Then the state, the shakedown happens. And then that's when we're like, no, no. We're, they, they basically took what, like 70 bucks off of us. Each. Yeah. They tried that's a lot of money then. Yeah. Cause that's all we had. Um, they tried to get more because as we're sitting there, I think two of you guys went to the ATM yeah, as we're time. sitting there, I see captain, whoever, talking about to the other guy back and forth and all of a sudden he says hey uh do you have a bank account in america oh, do you have family in america i'm like no nah, i don't have a bank account and my family hates me yeah because i knew they're gonna try to yeah. get some wired over yeah. and i'm like nah dude 70 bucks yeah, okay 70. 70 and take it yeah take it but that 70 is gonna cost you some vandalism oh yeah <laughs> on your train oh, we, that's what we're like you know and um now we still we got to Dortmund. We still got to go buy cans. Yeah. So we went, we went to the shop, got our cans. It was for our production. It was for the three angels and one devil production. Um, we used a gallon of magenta. We painted at night in a freezing rainstorm. Freezing rainstorm. Okay. We all did 3D pieces. Um, that was like, again, 3D for me at the time, I mm. only maybe did five or six. It was very out of my comfort zone. Sure. But I was so hyped to be there. Yeah. I'm like, of course I'm going to do it. I'm in Germany right now. I'm doing a 3d yeah. piece. Um, yeah. it was out of my comfort zone, but, but we, we did it. I feel like that production we did actually was legendary because that production made the rounds. It did. People saw it, did. it. Everyone talked about it. The amount of effort we put into that thing during that storm, that wasn't that the one where party, part of the rolling paint washed away we, when we finished it at night, yeah. It was complete. When we came back for day flicks, anybody that's been around long enough has rolled a wall, added your spray paint, and then when it rains, the spray paint stays and your rolling paint disappears. The bottom like foot was just literally gone and all the crap from underneath was still showing. Mm -hmm. So we took whatever we could and dusted it with fat caps to hide we, it yeah we did if do you clouds. look at flicks of that yeah. Per, yeah if you look at flicks of that production you'll see what we're talking about um and uh so we finished that yeah. we did it uh, you know because i was flicks of that in the box what do y'all think yeah, i don't know if it was like i don't know if it was the full did they have the full connector they had, they had yeah they got to see my my boys got to see the whole long connected. Could you tell that uh, the background was messed up? <laughs> and I'll tell you this, okay? The production was. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretty much cover this. Yeah. It was called Three Angels and One Devil, <laughs> and I don't think it was kind of like a tongue in cheek to Rex. Yeah. And I don't know if he knows this. He probably doesn't even know what the production was about. Yeah. And. Just to clear it up, three angels and one devil kind of alluded to our week in Amsterdam. Yeah. That was Big it time. alluded to the week in Amsterdam where it's not that we thought we were like, oh, I don't, I don't give a shit what you do. 
Yeah. And I don't think I'm better than anybody because I didn't partake in something. But right. it, like I said, it's a tongue in cheek. It was a tongue in cheek. You know, we alluded to the fact that we were in Amsterdam for the week and we were good boys. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> just did the graffiti. And he wanted to, he prioritized. The what the city had to offer so it was <laughs> yeah. kind of like and so there were the three angels which represented us and then out of the cloud there was that <laughs> yeah <out laughs> that, little one, that little one devil like with that. the middle finger yeah. so it was like it was a joke and it, it wasn't supposed to be at his expense it was just kind of like a funny like yeah i'll say yeah. i'll say from my standpoint you earned it you know <laughs> from my standpoint like you i said it. listen i said at the beginning when we started talking yeah. this might hurt some feelings yeah but there's nothing that i'm saying that isn't true and didn't yeah. happen it's just how it played L out let's, let's just keep it all the way honest right I, listen i understand there are some people that really want to go and basically sin all right go for it dude do what you want to do you want to see a donkey show fine guess what not my or my brother's it's interest. just not it, to me it's not what the group mission was it wasn't the mission the group we went to europe but i was under the impression yeah. that the group that we formed to go to europe was there for 110 percent graffiti related to burn mission, to burn we, we came were, there to burn we were there Americans. to see what it had to offer and and leave something behind we were americans that went to the heart of europe to germany to let them know that we were nice. That was the that, whole sole that, reason that was it. we wanted to go to their doorstep. Those same Germans that would come to America to our doorstep and absolutely fry people over oh. there. We wanted to go and do the same thing there because let me be honest, at the time, we were the hot boys at the time. We, we were the did ones. it with the bare minimum of resources. We 100%. had no resources, no connects. Right. And then when that situation happened with him being interested in debauchery and interested in the sin, in the sinful side of the trip, we were like, what are you doing? Why are you changing? Just get your head in the game. We're here. Like, why are you changing the plan? Yeah. You know, you so know, just, I, I was just thinking like, yo, how could you be here and not be like in the mo like, how can you not be down for what's happening with the graffiti? Like, how is that enough of a draw and a distraction to make you not want to paint? And I'm sure there's some people watching, thinking to themselves, like, of course I want to watch all that. But you don't burn. You don't burn like we do. And you didn't have a reason to go and showcase that. We put, we put our name on the line going to that place. And people knew. So I, I want to make sure that's overstood that that particular point of us going to those places was that solely if we wanted to go for touristy and i'm sure rex in his heart of hearts realized late that oh i should have just went here for tourist reasons and not business we went there for graffiti business yeah any real writer will respect what we're saying i'm sure you can have extracurricular activities but we were there to let europe it's know. not why we went that's not why we it, went. We went. We went for graffiti. So we we pretty much we finished up there. Um, that was we did that wall. Yeah. And from there, Kem had to go break yeah. off and went to Asia. That's right. He had to go for something else. He had something else going mm -hmm. on there. Um, wish that he was staying with us. We wish he was with us too. Um, and we at least he was able to get part of it. Yeah, a good part of it. Um, and then from there, we went to Basel, Switzerland. Oh, not Basel. Basel not, ba not Art Basel. Not Art Basel. Basel, Switzerland. Good old Basel, Switzerland. And that, so we went and our we actually had a connect. We had a place to stay. We had someone to pick us up For and once. make sense out of it. So that was kind of like a, okay, finally. It's a little easier. A little. Yeah, yeah a little. <laughs> a little, a little bit. So... You know, the first thing he did was he took us on a tour of the Basel line. Absolutely legendary Basel line. Graffi the graffiti that was on that line yeah. at that time was, it was like no chromes. Yeah. Burners, all burners, burners, burners. Dare pieces. Everywhere. Dare pieces all over the place. It was literally like, yeah. Dare was the man. He on was in that his line. bag too. Yes. He was like, you know You want to I mean? talk style? Yes. That man over there definitely had that in spades. Dare pieces had like 
it was the perfect mix. I, I, I feel like he had, like, I got inspired a lot by that, sure. by the pieces I saw of his, because it was like the perfect mix between it wasn't wild. It wasn't simple. Mm-hmm. It had just, his style had just everything it needed, nothing it didn't. Right. And he didn't use a million colors. He just planned his color combos, right? And he painted at night. Yeah. He painted at night on the right. line. So we walked that line. We saw a lot of pieces. Even Dime had a piece on it, like yep. 3D pieces on the line yeah. illegally. Lumen was, too. Yeah. Lumen had a, a little. Um, little um, <clears throat> which I feel like that's why they made so many waves in, in the graffiti scene is like they weren't gallery artists no. or mural painters they were they were considered graffiti writers yeah you know what i mean because that, about that, and, yeah and because them. they were doing it in graffiti places 100%. in the context of how graffiti is done yeah going to a location like that basically painting a track side that's just filled with burners that in itself shows that you're a writer yeah and i'm sure D- dare's uh style evolved from actually that location i Probably. feel like him being able to because those constantly trains going by yeah. he developed a very readable yet wild yet not quite wild yet not quite simple style and and enough enough detail to make it read as a complete piece but not so nuanced that you can't do it at night right because he was painting them at night right um, so while we were walking down in the the i remember the line was super vast I mean, it, it was, was big. It wasn't a single track. There were little sidewalls. There were go up like some crazy like uh, ladders. We went up ladders. I have a picture of us going up the ladder with the cage. Multi levels. Um, there were yeah, there were some New Yorkers that had pieces yeah. on the tracks at the time. Ses over there. Uh, Ses. Ses was there. T Kid. Um, I think T Kid had a production with Smash. Oh, Smash. Yep. Smash. Smash had a lot of stuff. Shout out to Ses. Yep. And uh, they were just, you know, and their pieces got respect. They, sure. Their pieces ran. Especially like, at that time. Like they were. Nobody was going over. Kings it. of the city. <laughs> yeah. And just it's, come to come. Like what we were trying to do campaigning. They had did before us. Yeah. And yeah. did a great job. Yeah. But again, they also had guides. Like, oh, like yeah. they had somebody at least to bring them to make sense of like, here's when we do it. Here's what we do here. You know what I mean? So yeah. now I'm not, I, I so don't want to. Speaking of the guide. Yeah. Speaking of the guy, who was the angel that helped us when we got to Switzerland? Oh, um, to take us to the yard. All those things, yeah. Okay. So we were painting. There was First, we were painting a, a wall called the, the Bakraben, which is the swimming Man, you pool. you remember the it. Bakraben. Good Lord. <laughs> it was the swimming pool wall. The swimming pool wall. And we painted there. Uh, we did purple pieces. Yeah. Um, you did gr- light gray background. You did yeah. the, the ghost faces pushing yep, out yep, all over yep, the place. All around, yeah. So we did that. Um, it was me, you, um, side, Sorry. and it was uh, Basil was his first name. It was Trash. Trasher. Trash. Oh, wow. Yeah, I Basil forgot. It was yeah. his name. Yep. Um, good and there was also Jake. And Jake. Jake, yeah. And Jake. And, they, yeah, and those guy. three guys were a hip hop act group called Phantom. I remember. So oh, Phantom, geez. you know, Phantom was, uh, Phantom. Still ha- I still have the CD, you know, what? I still have it. Oh yeah. This Listen, guy. I got stuff memorized. I can, I can rap in German. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but, know, I, know, know, but I know sound. the sound I have it in my head. Um, so we, we painted that wall and then we tell side, this was where like this guy just really got it done for us. Um, side said, he had to, he was busy that day mm-hmm. and he said, Hey, do you want, you got to do no. the accent, man. Got to do the okay. accent. Got to do him he, right, man. He said, yeah, you know, uh, and, and Cy did not have a, um, uh, like a, tr- like a common Swiss accent. Yeah. He had like a, a twang to his voice. Yeah. He had like a ring to his voice yeah, that yeah. like got in your eardrum, just a very <laughs> distinct voice. So yeah. if you think like, that's not a Swiss accent, I didn't say it was a Swiss accent. <laughs> I said it was my boy, Ronald. Okay. He Good. says, yeah, you know, um, you want someone to hang out with to, to, uh, today? I'm like, yeah, which, yeah, no, yeah, of course. He goes, okay, I will send him. He will meet you out there about Robin Wall. So <laughs> down comes this dude. I don't want to say his first name. I know he's a private guy. He yeah. operates. Yeah, yeah. He operates like this. Yeah. And um, it was Wink. 
Ah, uh, my boy Wink. Wink. And yeah. he was a uh, Wink uh, NEG crew, North End Gang. Okay, also Never Ending Game. Yeah. Uh, and he came down and we were like, yo, you know, what do you do? He was like, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? And I said, we want to paint. And he was just like, we were like, oh, well, you got any walls? And he was like, <laughs> walls, dude. He goes, waste of paint. He goes, you want to do trains? And we we're like, yes. Yes. We do. We do. <laughs> You're the man we've been looking yeah, for on this trip. Yeah. So basically, he says, yeah, we're going to go. Um, but it's not really that simple. But he liked action. Oh, he, it was we, his favorite. We said, do you have, like, do you have any nice, like, do you have any nice chill yards to paint? And he goes, forget chill. He goes, I want the action. He goes, we want action. We want action when you do with yeah, his hands. He, action. Yeah, he, he was like, I don't want to. Like, he, it's, there, there's a line in the movie Heat where the guy goes, you know, Nick, for me, the action is the juice. <laughs> and that's how he was. He want, he liked riskier spots yeah he didn't want quiet in and out like a freight spot he wanted train paint train yeah. painting so whatever he says yeah yeah he goes if you want it if you uh, let me he goes let me take a look at a few things and we can go tonight mm -hmm. and um while we were in basel for people that don't know basel is like literally you could it's on the border of france and Germany. You could right. be in the three, you can walk to the three countries in a minute. In a minute, yeah. So <clears throat> he says, okay, we're going to paint tonight, but we're going to paint in the Badersche Bahnhof Central Station. It's uh, Central Station. Right. Badersche Bahnhof. And that's, those are German trains. Yep. Okay? Germans. Now, if, if I'm getting any of this wrong, forgive me, but I don't think I am. I can't believe you even remember okay. it from all that time so, ago. So. You just, so, just chop uh, it up and swallow it. Yeah. So we go, we go there, and um, I remember Side says, uh, okay, uh, we're going to go paint with Wink. And, and Side was going with us. Going, yeah. And he says, we're going to go and paint, but we have to be done by 9 p.m. I was like, why? Is that like when the guards come? He goes, no. That's when Seinfeld comes out. <laughs> <laughs> and I, here i am i'm like this dude it, it's so it's such a common like we're in his home yeah there's no novelty yeah, this yeah 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 for us we're like this is everything this is what we're here for and this i'm like you want to be back for seinfeld that's dubbed into german you know what <laughs> costanza sounded like it was ridiculous oh, but wow. whatever so um Shit, i forgot what? that part Hold on. i forgot all i of didn't this. i remember all i love the fact that he remembers uh, <laughs> this um, so, um, he says, uh, all right, we're going to go paint trains. So <clears throat> we get our cans ready and Wink, who loves the action also says, listen, you guys do what I tell you to do in here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. He says, if you want to have no problems, you do what I tell you to do, but you do it the way I tell you. And when I tell you to do it, you do it immediately yeah. okay so basically we were in switzerland and we had to cross into germany on the tracks there was a we entered here and the trains are laid up there it's all fenced in they didn't have razor wire there you remember yeah. what the what it looked like yeah there were three bars, three bars and yeah. they had <clears throat> these spikes yeah that hook that that were points but yeah. they were in t's yeah and they're basically like razors and they turn yeah so if you fall on it it basically like goes in and then like it's kind of yeah, like twists twists out yeah it rips you up yeah, it rips it's you like up. oh you want to come in here okay yeah you so, don't regret that yeah and Hell's just to give some context the, the 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 fences were very small and the fence was buried into the ground like it went a foot, a uh, uh, quarter meter, quarter meter <laughs> <This guy. laughs> into, into the, into the ground. Okay. So you couldn't lift it. Yeah. So you were in there. The trains were down there. We entered here and we came here and we're waiting and we're sitting here waiting, waiting, waiting. I didn't ask why. Just waiting. He says, wait, we wait. And he says this, there's a guard house here. And we have to literally walk right in front of the guardhouse yeah. to get to there. So he says, when this train 
gets right to where we are, you run. Whisper. So basically, the train was blocking us like this. We're running, and the train is hiding us yeah. while we get there. And this train is like right here. Yeah. We got backpacks, and we're running. And the train, you could put your hand out, not even extended, and that's the train. So we run, boom, we're in. Okay. Um, also, I don't know, like, if that was like a no-no crossing, like, stay like, out. Are you supposed lines. to go through like a checkpoint or something? Or I, I don't know, whatever. But so we went in there. We were in. And um, cross. So country. we go in there, and he says, thirteen minutes maximum. Mm -hmm. Ten would be better. Yeah. Okay. And this yard was was um pretty hot at the time. It was getting smashed by two guys. Mm -hmm. Um, they were very smart about it because they were putting out, you know, it's, it's news that like it was hot, but they were smashing it. It was hot. The, the people that the, the cops and everything, they knew that it was getting painted regularly. So graffiti was like at the front of their minds. And, uh, we went in there and we, we started painting. Um, I remember my color combo. It was like Montana storm blue fill black outline and uh, it was like always an inline 1999 inline, inline yep, city inlines, yeah. um and then like uh uh mint green belt and oh, rao yep. mint green force field and um we started painting and dude i'm painting like <laughs> like frantically i'm <laughs> feeling like like a son of a gun and what did you say to me i said hey man look where we're at Calm down. You're like, yo, chill. Chill out. Just enjoy, you're like, enjoy it. And I was like, I still painted fast. Yeah. But I let take it in. I let the moment have I'm like, okay, it's like, and you know, just to give some context, you know, if you're like a seasoned train bomber at the time, you're like, yo, listen to this guy. Oh, how cute your first train. But whatever, man. It was my first train. Yeah. So it's significant to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I went to Europe and I'm here to paint a train and I'm painting a train. I'm right. hyped. So right, let me right. cut me some slack. Well, I, I, I said that to you, and I remember exactly why I said it to you, is because you were definitely frantic, not scared, but frantic, like going, going quick and yeah. stuff like that. And I was going like regular speed and whatever, yeah. fast. We were all painting faster. You we painted knew. faster than me because you had time for the 3A. But I that. also, I, yeah, and I also did like a very simple straight because I knew that that's what I wanted out of it. I right? wish I had a do-over on that because I did some weird like... No, it, 90s style. It was, it was, it was indicative of the nineties and that you had a great time. But yeah. one of the biggest things, the reason why I mentioned like, Hey, you know, just take it in, man. Yo, take it all in is because when I had painted New York trains, when they were still burgundy, I was frantic yeah. and I was with my brothers, Nazem and how, and next thing you know, I'm going too damn fast. Just wanted to get it done, get my flick and get out. But in the moment when I would help them do uh, the whole cars that yeah. we would do, right? I was sitting back watching point for them and I was taking in what they were doing, but I was in the moment. I was like, this is beautiful. I'm looking up yeah. the sky was yeah. filled with uh, uh, stars. It was clear night. Everything feel, felt so like crispy and tact. Yeah. I was, it was beautiful. You don't want to miss you don't the feeling miss of being there. Like sure. You're going to end up with your flick, but I, I wasn't there just for the, I wanted the experience. Yeah. You know? And it was, it, and it I was, felt like, since we were all together and again i've had a bit of of experience so i was saying to to y'all i'm like this is great yeah. this is great let it let it wash yeah. over you until <laughs> wink told us don't take flash photography tonight oh yeah trust me we'll get the day shots tomorrow but yeah. we didn't want to risk it yeah and we said well, how about we'll take we'll take our shots quick, and we'll go. Yeah, he says. Okay, he knew what was going to happen. He I knew. think he knew he liked the action. He likes He's the like, chase. Why not? He liked the chase. He goes, why okay, not? sure, go ahead. So boom, 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 boom. We take, you know. You take six, seven shots. I take six, seven shots. Yeah. That's a lot of damn flash photography a lot, yeah. in a main central station yard. Boom. Okay. So with a disposable camera. Yeah. With one of yeah. click. <laughs> yeah. There's click. no no iPhone. We didn't even know. We didn't know when no. they came out. So you had to take multiples. 
Okay, so we're back. We're going out. We come out over here. Boom. We see a locomotive and a train right here. Side goes running that way. We turn and look this way. And we see a guard running as fat, so fast he's holding the hat yeah. on his head with a dog with a German with shepherd. A German shepherd. Dude is running. Yeah. And I mean he's Booking. and not like some getting yeah. paid by the hour security dude. No, this he dude wanted, wanted us. us. This guy did not and the thing he had that he had that like he was pissed from whoever painted for the last two months and he was gonna so I ain't gonna let you get away. No. And I actually, we actually saw it not down that line. Yeah. It's when we ran down our line. We ran back yeah. this way across the front. I remember we were, we saw the ends of the train and I looked right down the line and I, that's when I saw the guy. And I, that's when I was like, okay, this is so on. And I really wish it wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh man. So we start running and Wink just says, follow me. So we yeah. start running. Boom. We go all the way. There were probably like, I think three or four at the most rows. Yeah. We were painting the second one in. We run this way and we go about two cars down. Yeah. And this dude lifts up the fence where the he fence. cut it. He had a, he had an exit yeah. where he cut the fence flush to the ground where none of the guards could see it to yeah. repair it. Yeah. He lifted it up and we went right down under. This is where you and I almost exited. Now, this is, this is one of the first times I stared in the face of death. Did you tell them the story? No, I haven't told them this. Okay. Something similar. I, I think I might have alluded to it. Have I ever alluded to? Okay. Okay. Okay, so okay. here it comes. Your father and I almost got killed together by the same train. You know how you see here dudes at school or dudes somewhere where, yo, I almost got killed. And they, we, people just throw that around loosely. Yeah. If I tell you we almost got killed, it means we almost got killed. No bullshit. Hold on. Basically, Ronald, Ronald goes running that way. He side. Goes, sorry, side. Yeah. Right, let me start over. Come right. Side goes running that way. He's gone. And we trust that, you know, he's been in that yard before. He knows. Um, Wink and us two. We go running this way. We're following him. He has the fence cut low to the ground, lifts it up, and he cut it in such a way that the workers didn't know that it's, it's, it's not like a whole cut like this that we get patched right up. So he has his little exit point because he, he liked to paint there a lot, and he, he's a smart guy. Um, lifts it up, and if we went in there alone, because we were talking about trying to figure out how to get in there alone on our yeah. own. Let's figure it out. It's Oof. no. Um, maybe tough. if we took a car somewhere out, out of the city yeah we could find a smaller place but um that wasn't happening so he lifts it up lifts it up we run down and we go down this embankment and we he kind of like we didn't follow him for a second yeah he kind of went running but for whatever reason we just kind of broke off like this and we were on tracks yeah there are tracks there and we're running kind of like we're gonna go up the hill, but we're just kind of running this way and we're on the tracks. And all of a sudden, we didn't hear shit, but yeah. boom, out of nowhere, we didn't realize that what we were running on was a sharp curve and we couldn't see this train was coming dead at us out of nowhere. Yeah. Boom, we just heard yeah. right on us was the, a locomotive of a passenger train, probably the ice train, the yeah. white, the white, um, Inner City Express. Yeah. Um, the ice train is like the fast one. It has like the nose, the the, yeah. the slanted nose, like yeah. that. They shit would have like a speed us. a speed train. Yeah, high they're, speed they're train. fast. They're fast. Yeah. It's not like some streetcar. And um, that thing was we, on us. We literally were were like almost side by side, like this close mm -hmm. to each other. And I just remember, thank God, both of us just jumped to the left, you and there was thick bushes here. Yeah. Okay. We literally jumped and mushed into the bushes. Yeah. And we bounced off of them and fell into the ground. But this is how close the train was. We hit the bushes. And before we hit the ground, the train passed. Hit us. Yeah, that hit right past. We us. had if another half second. If half we didn't second. jump, yeah. we, would we would be both dead. been dead. Dead. Okay. And that's just, I mean, I've, I've told this story to people before. And 
we've all heard bullshit stories from people where I almost died and they didn't. No. It, like I said, when I tell you this shit, I only remember it this vividly because of how close I, I regardless of what anybody thinks, I was there and I know how damn close that shit was. No, when we got out of the bushes, you turned to me real quick. He's like, dude, we almost died. Yes. We lit okay. He literally said to me, dude, we almost died. And I'm it like, wasn't over yet. Let's keep going. We're, we're like, let's keep going. <laughs> well, because we're not done yet. The train, if I remember correctly, the one that almost hit us gave us some time from those dogs. Yes. Those yeah. dogs were coming. We heard them. Yeah. So it, the, the train gave us some time. We ran back up a hill and we meet back up with Wink. Wink is there. Um, and we end up in like a community garden. Yeah, it's like are. a garden where, you know, you live in the city. There's like a co-op garden where people just have their little plots and they come in there and it's like a maze. Yeah, maze. Yeah. So we're literally running through like a little grid, little gardens like this, and it's all fenced in yeah. and we're running, running, running. And we, we get to the end and we just decide to, we get to a pathway, like a sidewalk. That's near a street. We're, we're nearing the exit. We're nearing a street. We start running this way. He just grabbed my shirt, went, yeah. grabbed my shirt, mm -hmm. and was like, this way. Yeah. Okay? And he jumped, grabbed my shirt. We ran here. <clears throat> there was a tram. Just o doors open. Boom. We jump on. We get on the tram like this, freaking exhausted. And we're both just, we're all three of us just sitting there, and we go this way where we were going to run and at the end of the, and at the end of the path, Wink goes like this. He goes, Hey, and he points to three police cars and two guys outside of the car waiting they at the end waiting. of the path. He goes, that's the way you were going. Yeah. <laughs> we were to literally <laughs> ran right ran into the cops them. and he just goes, that's where you were going. Yeah. It, and he said it in such like a, there you go. Hey, it was almost like, didn't I say, yeah. follow me? Everything I <laughs> you said. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm glad we did. We, so we basically got the full experience. We got the full experience <laughs> yeah. on that one. And um, from beauty all the way to the chaos, all the way to like fear, all the way to excitement, all like the full the full myriad of what it really means to be in that situation. And it, it, it's, it's, and it's, meeting the darkest of the dark without necessarily going with him. Yeah. That was, a, that was, yeah. And it was, it's crazy to think, um, you know, just the, the fact that we got that full experience is like, I, in hindsight, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't trade it for a chill night. Because I wouldn't remember it as much. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's kind of like why <clears throat> I always say, you know, you know, people that people that sit and do only black books at home and never leave the house, or or people that do only iPad, iPad sketches. sketches. If you do an iPad sketch and you think you're a graffiti writer, okay, you tell me what your coolest story is on that <laughs> iPad. Your, your, your cat <laughs> unplugged your thing, you ran out of layers. Your, your iced coffee spilled on the fucking thing. Yeah. Don't tell. No. Yeah. Don't tell me. It, it's not the same. You got to go out yeah. and do some shit because I guarantee you, no matter how sick of a train outline I drew on an iPad, I'd never have a story for you or a memory like, like that one. Life is um, not inside of that iPad. Yeah. Life and I don't want to get on the whole iPad thing. I just brought it up to, of like the, the experience is the juice. Right. Like the graffiti, like the whole point, it's like, I mean, I don't know what point I'm trying to make. I'm just talking the out point. of my head right now. The whole point is we could have done, I could have painted my letters at home. Yeah. Instead, we decided to go halfway around the world and go live yeah. and try it somewhere else. And that's the whole point. Like that's grow, what graffiti is. And then grow to be old men to reminisce on. <laughs> yeah. And be scared to death both that my have, sons are here hearing this. We both have families. Knowing, we both have kids. Um, but knowing the, that, that, that we technically are 
revealing a very intimate moment of ourselves with life, like yeah. really reaching out and chasing down yeah. life. And, and honestly, look, just like to kind of break the fourth wall or however that shit goes. Yeah. If anybody ends up watching this later, yeah. like some people like this might be too long of a story for some people to care. But it's not free. I don't care. Like this is my like this is our story. This, this, is, this, this is, is what's important testimony. to us. Uh, yeah. And here's the best part about this is the fact that, like you said, here we are, older, older, not old yet. We'll get there. Old um, Ancient. here we are, old men talking about this. Yeah. The part that I love the most is we're not sitting here talking about it as has beens. Ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're not talking about oh, back in the day. Remember yeah. when we used to paint Toto? Yeah. We're still, yeah, we're still there. Active. We're yeah. still painting. I still love graffiti just yeah. as much. Like, I'm glad. I love the fact that I still, and I'm. I know you do too. Yeah. The fact that we still love this. We still live this. We're still. Yeah. Doing yeah. what we. We're still are doing. players in the game. Yeah. Not, not yeah. spectators. Yeah. I'll I'm say not this. just reminiscing of my heyday twenty some odd years ago. It's. I'll say this. It today. I, I, I love still being a part of all of what it means to be a graffiti writer. Yeah. But I'm just taking my doses much oh, yeah. smaller. <laughs> much smaller. Yeah. Speaking of doses. Yes. Speaking of how incredible that, that particular moment was, it was not the damn end. No. We moved on to the next, <laughs> next nah. leg of our journey. Well, we did have to go back and get day flicks. So, and we were instructed. Definitely. So it, now let's, let's unpack that. Okay. So we went back to get day flicks because we, he clued us in that we could. We could. Though yeah. there was a delicate way of doing it. Yes. Explain that. Okay. When any graffiti got done in the yard, mm -hmm. the, these guys were no dummies. They knew that the currency, the, the, what was most valuable to the writer was to get that photo. 100%. So anytime there was new graph, and they knew there was new graph because they just freaking chased us with their dogs. They sit there and they post up and they watch the platforms extra hard the yeah. next day. And they're watching for anybody. If you aim a camera at some graffiti, you did it. Yeah. Or they're going to grab you. Shit. They grabbed us for a little yeah. over well, there. So yeah, they they're going to yeah. something as small as that. You so that? he basically said, when we're going to go in there. You're going to walk around. You're going to just kind of look confused, look like you're looking for your friend getting off the train or whatever. And he said, just kind of, you know, you can't go like this. Yeah. Don't sit there like a tourist taking photos of the Eiffel Tower. You got to, he said, you just kind of, kind of hold it like, just hold it by your stomach, aim it, take a shot, like literally while you're walking, no extra movement. So even going to get flicks of that was, was like, do it a certain way. And the thing, the thing is too, it's like, um, you almost didn't want to let the dude down for oh, yeah. being willing to, to risk it, to bring us. Yeah. The dude didn't owe us shit. He didn't know us from a hole in the wall. Like mm -hmm. he was a, a train guy, mm -hmm. you know, him and him and his friend, super, mm -hmm. super. They owned a clo They owned a clothing line called number one yeah. action gear. I remember that. They took us and he, he didn't owe us any. He didn't have to take us. He just was a cool guy. I was like, yeah. And I went back and I visited him again in 2001 and I painted more trains with him in the yeah. same spot. I painted two more. I actually painted a train the night that Nace got killed. Oh, yeah. And I did a shout out for Nace because yeah. I remember that it was a scribble jam. It was 2001. And I was um, with Nace. Damn. That night. That really? Day. Yeah. For like a scribble jam. I yeah in the car and nace, yeah nace and i uh we ex exchanged you know goodbyes and i didn't think that he was gonna be killed that no that like an no. hour and later and that dude was amazing like he had his mm -hmm. own mm -hmm. his own style right you know and um so i i went back to that yard i did paint um, but how beautiful is it to have a flicks of that shit dude? yeah after to, to be after able to document story like to, that because you know what it is um, I'm glad I have photos so I don't remember it any different or bigger than I remember it. I don't, because <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah, you it's can like you catch a fish, that shit it. was this big now. Yeah. Like, yeah. you, 
yeah, I, I wanted an accurate to, to have the day shots and we got them. It was just, and it was the, and the fact that it was the German train. Yeah. It was the perfect, That'll fuck like you those to, dudes in Dortmund. Like I got you. my $70 back. Yeah. I you know got what I mean? Like, and, and in spades. <laughs> yeah. I got my $70 back. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that, um, and, and we, we kind of like, we're thinking we were on the fence of like, should we do it or not? And it was like that. That kicked it over. Now we are like, nah. Yeah. I we're, remember we're paint we're painting these. You know what killed me is that the guy gave us a receipt for that seventy dollars. Yeah, the receipt. that's that photo of me yeah, holding it like me this. You gave me a receipt. You gave dude. me a receipt, and you just basically just take my money. Yeah. Like, don't give me yeah. a receipt. Yeah, like that was like a slap. I was like, all right, that was that was and before we go back home. Like. German train, yeah, like you get, it, you get German you train, get it painted. You you would have got it any other time, <laughs> yeah. but we decided to cull it back. But you decided to kick us over, so <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, then after that, okay, we went to the gym. Ah, uh, that, that's right. Do you remember the name of the jam? It was. It was. There was a dude named Ace, Ace. in Basel, a very yeah. prominent DJ. Yeah, and it was like Ace's birthday or something. That whole jam was a birthday. Party. It was a a jam in Basel. Yep. And I don't now. I don't remember where in Basel it was. I yeah, just remember it was in. It was in basically right. And it was cold. It was cold. It was sub freezing. It was freezing <clears throat> that night. Yeah. Um. Borderline snowing. Yeah. Um. Phantom performed on stage. Phantom performed. Yeah. Um. Killed it. Who Who else is there? There are a lot of b boys there. Yeah, um, that was where I met up with. Uh, my guy Tough Kid, yeah, and Tough Kid at the time was a very legendary b boy, but we happened to know each other, and uh, I ended up dancing with them. He was from Basel City Rockers, that's his crew. Yeah, I have and, photos uh, of that night too. I'll get you. Oh my god, I do have photos that's of that. Wonderful. So, uh, it was a great, it was a great, uh, 48 hours in in, uh, in Basel uh, up to that point, legendary. And then we we, we go to the, okay, we go. We're telling it. We're telling it, dude. All right, dude. We're giving it. This is hundred percent true. Disclaimer right now. Hundred percent true. Th this is how it happened, and and if anyone gets offended because yeah. they know this person, like that's your problem. Yeah, it's your problem. This happened. This happened, and none of this is <clears throat> embellishment. None of this no. is is. Uh, I wish it. I wish it didn't go. This way. <laughs> I, I wish we had a better experience. You know, I, I wish. I really and I'll and I'll give shout outs <laughs> to who helped us, who say who salvaged it. All right, before we get to that, take a swallow of that iced coffee because this is going to be a uh, – this one. This one's a long time coming, okay, <laughs> telling this story because <clears throat> many of my friends, many of his friends, many of people that know always wondered the details of this particular night. Here we go. <laughs> okay. All disclaimers made. We go to this jam. It's Ace's birthday. I don't know who Ace is, but it was it was a great Ace event. Great, yeah. Whoever put that event on, yeah. um, there were good writers there. There was like some wall space, and there were like these little trailers out there. Yeah. I was like, "F this, dude! It's cold. You painted one anyway. You did a yeah. black and white, yeah, like back. crazy flat style in the back right, of right, one. Right, I remember right. that. You were like, "I'm getting one in. You yeah. did it." Um, inside, you know, Phantom performs side. Yeah. top of his game at the point in my opinion yeah. like they were in they his, were great in his bag. yeah they were great he was in his in his prime <clears throat> um and you you were breaking that night mm -hmm. it was it was just yeah. a good it was a good time i remember it was just like and we didn't even expect we to go there we were really like, on the high we didn't expect that we're going to end up at this jam that wasn't the plan it's just that's the beauty of going on this trip was right. you end up where you end up you meet people and it takes you places well, when you go on a trip like this, sometimes you cross paths with someone that takes you on a little side journey. Side okay? journey is quite a word. So we somehow, there's a writer there that hears that America's, now you got to remember, we talked about 3D yeah, yeah, graffiti 3D being yeah. super important at yeah. the time. Um, a very, at the time, prominent, at the time prominent 3d writer was there 
and caught wind that we were there, he heard America's top 3D writer is in the house and is visiting. Found out however where we were and tracked us down and boom, right next to us. Yeah. You must come to my home. You must stay with me. You must paint with me. I insist because we were going to stay with side longer side long. We were going to paint some more stuff. I was hoping to get another train yeah. with wink. Like yeah, I really I wanted to, this dude insisted like, yeah, damn near grabbed and brought us. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. So we literally like packed our stuff and went with seek CNS, seek, seek CNS, seek CNS insisted you must come to my home you're gonna paint with me yeah. i won't take no for an answer let's so we packed up our stuff early yeah and ccns was a very well-known 3d writer he wasn't just the guy no. who was on the peripheral no he actually was in uh in the name <clears throat> of people that they would consider he out was, of germany he was a part of listen he i'm not paint, taking i'm not at the, the time, time I'm not taking anything away from the guy. Mm -hmm. Prior to this trip, I well, this is, I'm bringing this in the context to let them know that the reason why we even humored it was just on the fact that this dude himself wasn't no ho. He, he wasn't just some random. He dude. earned his stripes. He at the was time. painting with he, dime. He, he was, was with dime with, lumet. Everyone. Um, all of like okay, when we went to Noise, that's where Noice, the Three yeah. Angels production mm -hmm. was, the Noise Hall of Fame. There were really good productions, and he was. A part of every single one right. and he had really good pieces right um he had his own 3d style he was he wasn't nobody you know, he, he was a nobody. prominent german 3d guy at the time and it's like you know you you have to you had to give that to him yeah um but sometimes the work and the person <laughs> don't yeah uh don't match. Sometimes the the person can kind of tarnish your view of the work, and kind of how things played out, little by little by little. This visit just was like, yo, like we couldn't. We were done. We were over it. Yeah. I don't know really kind of how to sequence this. Yeah. I don't know how to start this. There was some stuff. There was some stuff said that I don't even want to repeat. He said stuff about your wife. I know. I I, I don't want to repeat it. I have to repeat it. I have to say and it, some. And things. he said it early in the trip, like yeah. on the train yeah. to his house. He he. I I want to say. You showed him a photo of your wife, yeah. and he said something, and I was done. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. I and wife, but also the mother of my two sons here. Yes. So here's the thing. That happened, and I'm going to say it if you don't say it. Oh. One way or another, it's going to get said. All right. Because I want an entirety, because this is one of those things. I don't want to look like a petty dude now, hanging on a guy. Like, this dude earned the earned experience every he, that he had. He, he, he invited for us for graffiti. Yeah. And what we got was just like yo what are you doing yo, who is this? what are you what is this? doing right so let's <clears throat> let's walk down this road <laughs> yeah <laughs> so we end up going with him we end up and it was the 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 weather went worse i remember because we couldn't change our mind because we were like okay we finally either we went to cologne did we go to cologne or I can't remember where. I feel like that was where he lived. Yeah, it was. And Cologne or Cologne. Cologne, Cologne yeah. However you, yeah. you know, forgive me, my German folks. But yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. We ended Cologne. up going with him and then things went for the worst weather wise. So we couldn't turn back. Right. We couldn't go back to meet up with Ron. And it was really late. Yeah. It was really late. Yeah. So we were on this ride, whether, whether we, we could only go forward. You can't go back. Yeah. We only had to keep going. We took that night train and ended up in Cologne yeah. or Cologne or whatever you yeah. call it. And remember? yeah, I remember. Yeah. And we he ended up, uh, he, he, you showed him a photo. You said, Oh yeah. You know, my wife. And he asked, that's where he started. It. Yeah. 
he asked to see a photo. And what did he, what did he ask you? I had a paper photo, right? And the paper photo is, my, is of my beautiful wife, Julie, mother of uh, Reza Nassina. And uh, when he looked at the photo, he said, is, is she, how long has she been uh, after the surgery? Is she pre-op? Is she pre-op? He said, is she pre-op? Right. But like leaned in like this. Right. Like with like <laughs> real like. Yeah, like very interested yeah, in Yeah, like, like in a weird, like in a creepy way, but like very like. And uh, we've only known him for I, a I couple was instantly hours. like, yo. Like he right. was like, is she pre-op? Yeah. So he was insinuating that my wife was a transvestite. Yes. Was a, was trans or whatever. Yeah. Right. After and knowing us, what an hour and, and a, a half. couple hours, yeah, like we two literally, hours. we literally ditched side, yeah, to go with him mm -hmm. to be invited to go paint into what I thought was going to be like, hey, come paint, right. and instantly it was some weird shit. Well, when he spun that, I'll be honest, this is what I how I took it. You got to understand, I, I'm, I've been living in New York. I'm an ATLian. I know how to have thick skin. I was like, maybe this is some kind of, you know, uh, happy jigging of 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 um, of how they do in Germany. Yeah, maybe like, this yeah, is like their may, way of may, doing Yeah, maybe dozens. you're maybe we're missing like uh, yeah, like this is comedy to like uh, yeah. this is uh, um, like how humor. New Yorkers will be like, if fuck all yeah, 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 fuck yeah. all like this. Maybe this humor to his folk in Germany. So I'm like, nah, like you have, I, it, I took yeah, a second. Yeah, I saw you. You were like. You yeah, bit your like, lip a little bit, but you're like, nah, yeah, I was dude. like, okay. and, no. And then he goes, you're like, no, nah, dude. And he goes, and he snapped out of it. And he goes, okay. He goes, uh, maybe I made a bad joke. And you're like, yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah you remember. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. You went like this. You, you like, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And he chill. He backed off on that one. He was yeah, like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, I, I, at that time I was a little bit more brooding and I was definitely more interested in violence for most of my stuff. But <clears> I, rolled it back. I felt like at the end of the day, maybe it wasn't that serious, but lo and behold, was I wrong? So <laughs> let's keep going. Uh, Is this where we get to his house? We got to his house. And it's a dark. I remember it was dark. We went to the outside of it. It was like an apartment. Yeah. And we, it was just the only thing that, and it feels like if I, if you remember this, it feels like we ended up on a German street where the whole street seemed dark. Yeah. Except for his, like, stairwell yeah it was the only light there and it was mildly raining like like a yeah. drizzle and i just remember like every like half hour he would interject some really mm -hmm. weird like <laughs> deviant <laughs> sexual yeah. question yeah, i'm just like ones. yo just that like if we're giving off any kind of vibe that you think we want to talk about that like no dude like we're we're here to paint. Like, you want to talk about graffiti for a little while, or you want to be on some weird shit? Yeah. Um, and he just kept on it, and um, it just it just kept on like that. And I remember even like we were we were in his house. And Before he says, that, we walked <clears throat> up to his place. Yeah. Like I said, it was like cold and quiet and dark, but his his stairwell. We walked up, I feel like it was about like four flights of stairs, and we come to his little dirty white door. Yeah. Right when we come to his door, he opens it, he goes in. I go in first after him, and you come behind me. As I walk through the door, there's a stack. There's a little foyer, little uh little end table, or it's not table, a uh, little desk or whatever to the side of the door. And there's a stack of about 20 videotapes old VHS videotapes with new then, I guess. And they were stacked up and the very top one said, <laughs> and I'm looking at it. I don't, I I don't even remember this. I do. All right. I look at it. I look at it. I looked at you and I looked at it and I go, this shit says transvestite rape tape. Uh, and the cover uh, of the, the VHS, the cover of it was of a very not, not, uh, Obviously, not a woman. What do you call it? On the cover, with yeah. just smeared makeup, not quite, not a, convincing, complete, like, like low, a truck stop, a low effort, like a truck yeah. stop female, right? But that's probably was his thing. And I saw it, and I looked, and this is the first thing as the door opens. 
I look and I look at you. I'm like, yo, what's this shit? What the fuck? God, I went in, went into hood mode, like, what is this for it? Yeah. And and you were like, yo, and he's laughing. He's not but embarrassed he's not, about it at he's all. He's not embarrassed at all. He's no. like, yeah, come on, come on. Yeah, inside. yeah, yeah. Not like, come on, don't not, look not at like, that. Not like, oh, shoot, let me clean up before He's you like, come oh, in. Yeah. Like, oh, the yeah. maid hasn't come and cleaned. Yeah. So we walk in, and that was the first alarm for me. Yeah. <laughs> so his, if you, do you remember how his apartment was kind of like set up? It was like this long corridor. Yeah, long corridor. And but like when you walk in, there was a dresser here. That's with right. Four drawers. That's right. Okay. And <laughs> he said, "Now here's There's the a kitchen. When you come into the kitchen, and then like a little uh, like a uh, living room area, yep. and then the farthest area, it's all in a long corridor, and that's where like the bedroom, like yeah. the little what I call it, and and that dresser thing. Yes. Yeah. And the whole the whole just to give like a little context here." The whole story here, the whole purpose of this is, correct me if I'm wrong, the reason why we're talking about this is not to sit here and like smear this guy. It's to basically tell the story of how we almost got held hostage, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. Content, like, like what was talked about. Yeah. was such a bait and switch. Oh, yeah. We were there for graffiti and this dude brought us into his effed up dark world yeah. and imposed it on us. Yeah. Okay. So let me get right back into it. Yeah, yeah. We walk in, transvestite rape tape. Yeah. Clearly not embarrassed. Said in English and not in German. I don't read German. It says that. Not embarrassed by that. Okay. Not embarrassing. So next he says, feel free to look at some photos in the dresser. Okay. So I open the top drawer, look at some flicks. He leaves the room. He's doing something. I don't know. He's walking. Now, wait, wait, wait. Before we go to that, he kept going like this. Oh, he, yeah. He had, he had, um, he kept, no, 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 his, no. his lips were mega chapped and he, and, and they, they look like, like almost like scat, like inflamed yeah, it was as white. if like, imagine you were like on a snowmobile in, in the Arctic yeah. and you didn't cover your face. It looked like his lips were just like whatever. And he kept like, they looked like, just it made you uncomfortable they looked like they stung and he would lick them every like 10 seconds to re-wet them to, to get some yeah. comfort they of were what he red was and they peaked at white yeah and i don't know what the hell he got into yeah. i don't know what but so, i just bring that up because he kept doing it and it was licking. very hard it was very uh, it was an uncomfortable visual yeah matched with his mannerisms and the personality yeah. So I'm digging through the, the dresser. He says, oh, oh, you can look at the, some flicks. I'm looking through The dresser them. has what, four drawers? Four drawers. Three? Yeah, four, four, right? That's what I thought. Um, and he's over there. I'm looking through them. I look through some flicks. I pull the second one, some random stuff. I pull the bottom one. I see a couple of magazines. I wanted to see what was in all of them before I deal look more i'm just seeing i don't know let me take a look because i don't know what else to do here i don't want to talk yeah, I, yeah. I don't i can't small talk this guy and i can yeah. small talk the best Anyone, of them yeah he clearly didn't want to talk about graffiti no but he said look look at some flicks i go to open the bottom drawer all right now remember he's already not embarrassed by anything we've seen here's right. the thing let me let me make sure that people okay. understand this okay the top drawer the top drawer had flicks Yes. Scattered, you know, what do you call it? But in them, there was a few very questionable, yeah. zesty yeah. flicks in the top one. The second drawer, if I remember correctly, that one had magazines in it, but the magazines in there was more filthy magazine than graph. There was graph and hip hop the magazines. The content went got down worse. as the drawers went That's down. That's right. And just like you said, we got to the just third as one. A, just as a precursor, there was no, no embarrassment, no shame, no nothing mm -hmm. for the transvestite rape tape. Yeah. Like you vouch for that. Like, yeah. ha, 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 ha. Okay. Just to give you a level of where this person's mind is. Yeah. He's over there. Rem I remember the third, the third drawer had the pictures of Dime and Lumet with no clothes on, laying out on a whole bunch of nudie mags, going like yeah, this, like I, reading I, them. I didn't even remember that. I, I'm, 
I'm okay. telling you that's what it was. When the third drawer, okay, the first drawer is graffiti flicks with some whatever stuff sprinkled in. Second one was nudie mags. Third one was actually like, I feel like files and receipts on like famous people, writers, people, people that's like, you're like, dude, that's like almost like trophies. Yeah, like on, you shouldn't have that. Like he goes like, yeah, that's that. And there was a picture like, of dime. It's like blackmail material. That's right. It's like blackmail. Material. And he was laughing. He was laughing from the end of the hall with that open, right? The third drawer. But the minute he reached for the fourth drawer. I reach, I reach down and I start to open the bottom drawer and I, it opens, it gets like an inch open. This big guy, he's not yeah, he's, an athletic he's dude. Six this two. big guy darts from across the room. I mean, in an explosive full run, full run full clip. Boom! <laughs> Kicks the fucking door like the SWAT team <laughs> on a bust. Kicks the door like this, and no anger. What does he say? He in a shy little giggle. He goes, <laughs> "Not, that, not one. that one. Not that one." What that. the hell was in that drawer? Both of us you, looked at each other like, "What?" If you're not embarrassed about that VHS tape, what is in that drawer? And my God, I'm glad he kicked it shut. However. I'm back to my say I'm back to the point. Again, this is simply just to tell like this is the highs and lows of a graffiti trip of how you end up in different places and we're just kind of like oh my god like we and the thing is we had nowhere to go. We couldn't we couldn't leave. We 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 needed to be there for 2 days before going back to our yeah. flight in Amsterdam. We really were kind of like we can only go further. We were it's like being lost in a cave you don't want to be in, but the only way out is that way. Yeah. The one person that saved that. Wait, 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 wait. We're not oh, done. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. more in there than the <laughs> bottom drawer. I don't know if you remember <laughs> this. Is, okay, let me I'm make try, sure that. I've been trying okay. to purge it. I know, I, I know. I got to add this on there. All right. Okay. <laughs> Here's something that you forgot, right? All right, all right. Do you remember on the side wall? Okay, so. His drawer was over in the far end. There was a window that's basically facing to the outside, right? Next to the window was a Amwire case. Yeah. I went over to the case and started looking at it. And when I was looking at the case, he had Nazi memorabilia in it. And there were Nazi, you know, uh, 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 Tottenkopf hell, uh, uh, skull, cross and bones. There was like all these different things. And you walk up and I'm like, bro, I don't know about this. And you walked up and I'm like, as you walk up, I'm looking at one of the badges. There's a badge and I, and the badge is a, um, a, uh, what do you call that? A, uh, concentration camp number from the, from the clothes. Yeah. And I'm looking at it and I go, is this what I think it is? And he over your shoulder says, yeah, that's that. And I was like, I'm looking at you and you're seething because yeah. this dude's dad was born in a concentration camp. Yeah. In, inter in, in an internment, internment camp. camp. Okay. Yeah. My, my father, my father was born in, in Poland, yes. 1943, spent the first two and a half years of his life was brought to um a in turn a nazi camp yeah so of course it's like listen history is history and i don't hold i don't hold anything against anybody personally we're just talking about this guy this guy seek cns we remember talking that. about I, we're talking about this and guy. he tried to get a rise out of me later yeah. on no he tried to get a rise out of you right then right then and there and and i i don't I wouldn't have visited Germany if I, I don't have a pro like that's yeah. what happened happened. And I don't hold anybody. I don't, I never held anybody um, responsible, but the fact that he kind of vouched for it with that, the, with the little delight that the, he the did, light, yeah. I'm just like, yo. And the thing is, I, I made the mistake of telling him yeah, that my father, father that, yeah. spent and my father and my grandparents spent 
three years, almost all, multiple times, almost died. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, I got stories that'll freaking yeah, turn, you your, know, turn your head. Yeah. Um, that happened. Yeah. And my father told me them straight up. And it's like, history is history. You know, even my father's was like this and that was another time I'm here. I'm here now. Yeah. But the, so okay. is this, but, but this the thing, history, but the thing too. is, uh, what turned me was the, the delight he took in it when he found out. Right. Because I feel like for the next two days, he just wanted to, he just wanted to like, yeah, watch me, it. watch me get angry. Right. By placing a little, uh, so when that, that happened, I thought that was some bullshit. hundred percent. You know, but here's the thing. When that had happened, I think you and I looked, we looked at each other and we hadn't even paint yet. Yeah. We ain't even, we haven't even yet. fucking this did is, any graffiti it's yet. It's about two in the morning. Yeah. And we look at each other and we're thinking, <sighs> I think, you know, how do we I not beat this dude's yeah, ass? Never like, mind. Like let's paint with him. I think we got to somehow get up out of this situation. Yes. But we have no choice. That got to understand. We're in our early 20s and we're thinking to ourselves, okay, we're kind of stuck in a place where there's no alternative. So we got to kind of work this. We got to ride it out. Now, <clears throat> when that had happened, right, he, now the whole time I'm trying to make levity of this, you know, I'm not sitting there brooding because I'm yeah. trying to somehow keep this situation light. Yeah, I'm just kind of like, whatever, let's get, I, I keep waiting to get to the graph. So, okay, whatever. He's like, let's, let's just get this out of the way. We're at his get. house. We'll figure something out in the morning. It's two in the morning. I start making jokes. I start doing this uh, goofy uh, accent. I start doing this. Now, I'm Asian, and I was doing a goofy accent of the famous movie. What was that movie? Um, was it uh, Full Metal Jacket? I think it was. And there was, I feel like it was Full Metal Jacket, right? And it was of a, uh, a prostitute voice saying, G.I., yeah. I love oh. you long time, oh, right? You were speaking his language and that one. I made that joke. I was like, you a nasty boy. You looking for those, those tr the, the prostitutes? Yeah, oh, you, oh, you be G.I., I love you long yeah. time. And yeah. I was doing that. Just, just to kind of to break, just the, break the, like, the ice. Yo, let's just, just like, cool oh, this, this got real weak. Like, I was like, oh, you a nasty boy. Like, let's lighten Oh, you a up. nasty boy. Oh, yeah. you looking forward to this? What you really look like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. Now I can talk that I'm Asian. So he loves it. Yeah. He, oh, he's over Now the you found his channel. I found the button, the press. He's like, you're my new wind up toy. Do it again. Yeah. Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. Yeah. So he wants to record me. Ah. Uh. So he's, he wants to record me making the, oh, you you a long, long time. And he goes to get a tape recorder, right? So he goes to get a tape recorder, and we're sitting there huddled over this tape recorder trying to record that, what do you call it? And he's like, oh, I, I can't wait to show this to my girl. I was like, man, you made fun of me and my girl. Let me see what's up with your girl. Yeah. Yeah? You want to see? I said, yeah. What's yeah. up? He goes out the room. And I look at you, like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and he comes back with this photo of this, she had to be like 55 year old woman. Yeah. I could, I thought it was a joke. Yeah. I was like, what? He's like, nah, this, this is weird, blah, blah, blah. I was like, <clears throat> oh, I'm going I'm to start fucking with you. I start, I'm going to start fucking with you. I start clowning him about his old ass, you know, your know, school librarian ass, like, she going to, yeah, you have the nerve to make fun of my beautiful wife. Yeah, you rolling with this? I <laughs> that's you. That's your ride. <laughs> that you better see how much miles is on that. Mom, yeah, you know, definitely uh, warranty is uh, fast. I'm sure there's some recall on it. But yo, so we try to like make levity of that situation, and I feel like we are able to kind of quell it for that night. Unless I missed anything. On no, that we kind of, we, we had, yeah. We, there was like enough, dude. Let's, let's just go to sleep. That is the first night at C CNS's place. That's the first big insult and disrespect. And we didn't ask to, we didn't ask, we didn't for, ask for him to bring us there. He insisted. The next morning, we go with him to go paint a place. Yeah, That's but, when we, 
but what's his name rolled in? That, I feel like we meet him. Do we? Don't we? Meet no, him he the next he day? came to the place. He came that he night. Came to the place. He oh, invited him. Okay. And shout out, mega shout out for save, basically corralling him for us. Um, wow, one twenty three. The Bro, big wow, one twenty three. Thank you, because you brought you the, gra- the normal graffiti experience that we were looking brought for. It back. You, you brought and you corralled this dude for us yeah. and you kind of like kind of squelched him a little bit and said, listen, let's go, let's paint, let's yeah. stay on schedule. Like, like it wouldn't have happened. I don't know what would happen if he yeah. did. Big shout out, dude. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. We got a lot of love for that guy Yeah, because realistically he, he we were super cool, dude. We had at one point in time looked at each other at, at, at this dude seek and thought, I think we could tie this more. Up. I don't, I didn't, I wasn't going to make it. I yeah. wasn't going to make I'll it. Like, I was going to like, yeah, I, we got to, we're going to just have to bounce or whatever. And he kind of like, <clears throat> he kind of came in and almost like without saying it directly, it was kind of alluded to like, don't worry. This is, we're going to, we're going to paint. We're going to make this happen. Yeah, he I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to save you guys here. Yeah, he did. They, that. he, that's without saying it. It's what he did. Yeah. And I think it's because he knew. Yeah. Seek. Yeah. He knew. He, he, he knew. He knew. <clears throat> Which worried me a little bit, but yeah. maybe but I, I don't think, think that he was vouched for, the- for that aspect of them. They were they were on a graffiti level. He yeah. chilled with them. Um, so, ba- but basically, I'll speed this up. Sure. Um, the whole purpose of him, like, you might be wondering, why did he want us there so bad? Why did he have? Why did he insist that we come back to his place? You know what I mean? Yeah. And <clears throat> it was basically he he alluded to, not alluded to, he said, yeah. Um that okay, you know, it's great that I'm the first European guy to host America's best 3D writer mm-hmm. and the whole point was to I'm going to have totem here and I'm going to burn him. I'm going to and yeah, it was, was and it was like, you know, I'm gonna burn. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like kind of level up by burning, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. America's 3D dude. I'm the 3D dude. Like it's almost like, it, you know what? He carried himself in the way like, yo, how dare you do my thing? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm gonna show you that 3D is not from America. Right. It you know came I mean? from here. <laughs> that was. And I'm I'm not making this up. I didn't interpret. I didn't extrapolate this no, from he nuance. Said it. He said this, mm-hmm. okay. And I told you guys before. Second disclaimer: anybody that knows this guy, if you don't like what I'm saying, go talk to him. Go talk to him because this is how it happened. Okay, yeah. I'm not a gossip dude. I'm not a petty mm-hmm. person. No, no. We're just talking no. about our trip. This is what happened. This is our mm-hmm. trip to Europe in '99. Yeah. Okay, out of the way. Um. Yeah. So. We he wants to, to try to exercise his his intent, which was to burn me. Yeah, so we're we're trying to get to the damn wall, but it <laughs> ends up being a tour of all his pieces. Yeah. And every time we stop at a new spot, we think that's the spot. That's the spot. But no, he, he just it's just a look at my piece. Look at my piece. We're like, my God, can we paint? And then we finally, we we literally said to Wow, we're like, are we gonna are paint gonna or paint what? And he was what? like, enough. Like so, boom, we went. Um, <clears throat> we ended up at a, a wall that was very similar in format to the Noise Hall of Fame, yeah. but it was mm-hmm. in Cologne, right? In Cologne, yeah. But I remember we had mm-hmm. to take a train to get there. That's right. Um, so we got there, we rolled the wall white, and I'm, I was not a 3D guy. I yeah. was a graffiti guy that right. also tried some 3D pieces. I right. was hyped on it at the time, like I said before. Now I got like six under my belt. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I remember... He said, we're trying to figure out the layout. Who goes where? He insisted. I wanted to paint next to you. Yeah. No mm-hmm. way. He stuck me down there. Mm-hmm. He put me. Which on the end. You, go, you are here. Blah, blah, blah. Insisted that he was next to you. And it was not going to happen. Insisted mm-hmm. just like he dragged us to his house. Yeah. He asks me. He says, uh, what, are, what are you painting today? Just, I think that was, it was purely small talk. That's what he said. Yeah. He says, what are you painting today? And I said, uh, oh, I think I'm going to do a 3D piece. And in a very like 
demeaning, dismissive way, almost like, like, listen, dude, like, yeah. you know what? He goes, I think it's better you just stick to, you do, yeah, you do a 2D that. piece today. Yeah. And that's when yeah, I knew, yeah. like, and I was still on the fence. Yeah. I was shuffling papers yeah. and I was kind of wanted to do a 2d piece in a way because it's a lot less work yeah you know a 2d piece a 3d piece is nothing but work it's, yeah, it's work. this this yeah. this 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 it's like so i would have i was on the fence like shoot do i want to just do it easy and flex a 2d piece i could just socialize and i was like oh maybe i'll do a 3d piece and as soon as he goes huh you, you should you yeah, know yeah, listen yeah, yeah. it's almost like listen let me handle it yeah. like you, you just you should do a 2D piece. That's when I knew I was like, nah, dude, I'm doing a, a, a 3D. Okay. Yeah. So I did a 3D piece and I thought it came out for, for not being a 3D guy, for kind of not knowing what the hell I was doing with 3D. I thought it came out good Yeah. on the road. It's not like you got all your supplies like right. um, in December. Yeah. It was December 1st. Yeah, now. it was freezing. It was December 1st. Yeah. Um, you guys paint next to each other. Yeah. And listen... You smoked him. He wasn't ready for just how you went about it. You know what I mean? It's just like it, you smoked him. Okay. He did a white piece on a white background. Yeah. It didn't, mm -hmm. it didn't translate the little bit of color. He did like, either way. I, I have flicks of it. You, yeah, yeah, you yeah. smoked him. See, the thing is with him, when we painted next to each other, I knew right then and there it was on. Yeah. But moreover, you I knew think, why you were there. You knew yeah. what it, you knew what it was about. He yeah. was there, he was there to slice your throat. And I know that he felt like that was what was most important. I think one of the biggest things that I saw was, oh, I'm a B-boy. I'm about to show you what this battle shit's all about. Yeah. I think what he thought is. I'm just going to do my piece and it's just going to be better than you. He thought he was just going to take your and lunch he literally and put just you in a corner. Do what he normally does, right? Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do something what I do, but with a twist. Yes. I'm going to make it look like it's moving and I'm going to make it look like it has a bunch of little babies attacking your yeah. piece. Almost like a spider carrying exactly. um, baby spider, almost like exactly. that. Exactly. So it's like literally, I did my, at the time I, had, I was doing my shark style. In and purple, you did like grapes, purple. like grapes and violets mm -hmm. on with like on a white wall. And uh, <clears> I, <throat> I painted it with battle claws coming out this time. Like they didn't they have were as both, many. They were back they like, were this, like this with blades kind right. of. Right. Like and then I painted a bunch of little ones and they were all going towards his piece. Those were all in like a, like a red, like they a were reddish, like yeah. a reddish color, mm -hmm. like a, like a red, like a strawberry red. Exactly. And, <clears> and they were basically <throat> accent colors for my piece, but that little, those little red ones were just basically dive bombing towards his piece. And if you look at the piece from a distance, it literally looks like his piece is like some kind of mushroom or something well, like that. He did some loop de loop yeah, thing. And then, um, and then the piece looks like it's about to like, basically like a swarm is about to envelop it. Yeah. And my whole with thing. No, with no stencil cap. No stencil cap. You literally. Did, you did full. You did Tiny full one, yeah. P 3D pieces that were like mm -hmm. the so like this big, right? No, no, stencil yeah, no cap. stencil cap, no <clears throat> brush, no none of that. My whole thing was like, okay, I don't like you. I don't even want you next to me per se. And you push my homeboy to the end. I remember why. I remember him really doing that. I remember him saying that to you. He even put fucking rolling paint on my jacket. I was like, yeah. oh, I want to beat this motherfucker's <clears throat> ass, right? But he acted like no one saw oh, it. And when, yeah. and and when, when I him. saw it, he, he dropped the roller on your jacket mm -hmm. and then looked up quick. Yeah. And he saw, I saw oh. him looking right at me. He goes, oh, oh, uh, yeah, oh, don't worry. He goes, don't, don't worry. I got something at the house. It'll get that out. Yeah. What mm -hmm. the hell you got at the yeah, house yeah, is going to yeah, take dry fun. latex out. You, you, yeah. uh, you operating yeah. under yeah. different yeah. physics than we do. Yeah. Dry rolling paint is dry rolling paint. So I washed that out. Yeah. Like we were done. Like, but. We did it, and he would have just let. He don't care, he man. Care. He don't care. So he, he was, put me at the kitty table. At the, he was at the, he was basically the, being passively, aggressively, uh, um, uh, disrespectful. Yeah. And literally, I was like, okay, I will tell you what, man. Uh, time for time for that Wu Tang approach. Time to swing this sword. Yeah. And literally, when I painted all the little stuff, I remember. After he had done his piece, he did his normal stuff. I did mine. He goes, wow, that, 
oh, those are those crazy. And I said to him, I said, your piece has dildos coming off of it, aren't they? He goes, oh, because <laughs> do you remember what was in the third drawer? He had a few dildos in there. Yeah. The weird ones that come off straight with a ball, just, straight with just a ball, weird, straight just... with a ball. And they look exactly like it because his extensions off his piece. I was like, ah, I know you well now. Yeah. Stayed at your house. Remember those? Yeah. Now those are coming off your piece. So that's your stuff. That's what's on your mind. That's, that's kind of like, your mind, homeboy? that's the train of well, thought. But guess what? Mine cut those things off, homeboy. So that worked out that way and not in his favor. All his plans. And from that weirdly and he couldn't show it he couldn't tell anybody about our visit no because he what didn't, he, he didn't show anyone it didn't no it didn't work but out. the beauty was that those stuff from that day ended up in other magazines oh, yeah. yeah and he had to feel it no matter what yeah congratulations yeah <laughs> and uh yeah it's just and that was day two and i, I think, think yeah. i think after that, we got back there. We packed our we shit. We packed everything. We painted. We got home. We grabbed yeah, our stuff, yeah. and we were out. And there was not a long goodbye. No, it was not. It was. Very it was not crazy. a long goodbye. And then we we got back on the train. We arrived. Our flight out wasn't until like <clears throat> five in the morning. Yeah. But we got off in Amsterdam at like eleven at night. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of wandered the streets right. all night. I want to make sure I say that I cap off the end of this Sikh story because this story is definitely one of the wildest, weirdest, craziest stories of my life. I will say thank you, Sikh, for being an absolute weirdo and giving me someone to aim my cannon at. You are really not the type of person I would ever want to see ever again. but you do live in my memory of an example of poorly raised person. Congratulations. <laughs> it's just, listen. and a terrible writer and a very terrible representative of, of German writers. Cause there's so many great ones there yeah. and you're not the one. Yeah. And like I said, huge shout out to, to one, wow. One, two, three. There were a couple of other dudes we painted with that day. And I'm really embarrassed to say, well, I don't know if they painted or if they, they were there. Out. But they were they were cool dudes. Yeah, they Every, hung out. Everybody was freaking They're cool in that to us. Picture, on, isn't it? Yeah, the one that Wild everybody was really cool to us on that whole trip. Yeah. I just don't know what the hell this dude's problem was. Okay, and so, it's like, like I said, uh, you'll notice we're not here talking shit about anybody. No, no there's no talking. shit. There's no talking shit. It's literally was like that's what we happened. we. <clears throat> I feel like I honestly feel the the feeling was like we got kidnapped yeah it literally felt like i was like like we were in yo like you you we were really, trafficked or something yo <laughs> the, you brought like you brought us here for graffiti and the, the whole it was weird Sniped us with that weird stuff like we like you don't bring people to your house and like put that on them because we didn't give out that vibe hey oh, you had like, photos of dime lumet cantu like like, well, may, I don't remember if it's Cantu, but definitely Diamond Lumet of them laying like half naked on a bunch of like porno mags. Uh, I was like, I hate to tell you this. If those photos exist somewhere out there, you might want to, you know what get, I'm saying? You might want to, because that's, uh, that's not a good look. But yeah. that is true. <laughs> I saw that with my own eyes. Yeah. Word. So, and, and, and look, the only reason we're not making the podcast to talk about this dude or to give anybody a bad name. Like I said, again, I, I, I feel like in case somebody's missing it. Yeah. We're talking about our trip. Yeah. We're this exhuming, happened. we're exhuming the devils. That was part of the story of our little Iliad that we had of our own little yeah. odyssey that we went on when we were there, a lot younger. Men. There were a lot of things about that trip that made it such a point of reference in so many of our conversations, yes. good and bad. Yes. Good and bad, highs and lows, highs and lows. Good times, weird times, frustrating times, challenging times. Getting arrested. Mm -hmm. It was a wild. Was that your first trip to Europe? I don't know if it was. It's, it was it wasn't my first trip to Europe. It was no. a very like full, yeah, full experience mm -hmm. of. It was cool as shit. Right. The whole trip was. And don't ever don't don't take any of this as. Uh, 
how we feel about Europe as a whole or Germany no as way. a whole because that's <clears throat> not what we feel. We Dude, feel I, it's about Sikh. Yeah. About this, Sikh. This is about one person, not about that. Like, I, I feel like, look, I feel like that doesn't even need to be said, but there's mm -hmm. always somebody that yeah. that doesn't twist, hear it, yeah. hear what we said right. and gets fixated on one part. We're not gossiper. Like, yeah. I've so now I have you, so many so many friends in 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 that country. I have zero beef, zero course. problems, zero ill will, zero anything. Right. This is an experience with one person that yeah. invited us to his house for graffiti and yeah. gave us some weird shit. Yeah, not his friends. That's it. Not anyone who has ever been friends with him either. <clears throat> not his family. Not his country. None no. of those things. Just just him. Yeah, just and you him. know what? I wish. I wish. You could have given us a cool story to tell, but this is what you gave us. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not telling. I'm not telling a story or making up a story. I'm recollecting yeah. events. You know what I mean? I really wish. I really wish he brought us and was super cool, and we did pieces, and then went out Wouldn't and got pizza. Great to just say, like, and go. Oh. I, I would have loved to have said, "Yo, that dude was as cool as I thought his pieces were before." Yeah, uh, and that's that. So that basically caps off that story about C CNS and now we're on the last leg of the trip where basically we head home we're tired yeah we're we're pretty weary from the trip we've been through the ringer but Amsterdam gives us one last <laughs> one last hurrah of of trying moments and uh we're going to talk about this one so we meet what back what up happened, with what happened in Amsterdam. <laughs> so we meet, don't we meet back up with Rex? He was with, he was on that, he was with us the whole time. At the, at the, he at was, he oh, was with right. us the whole I, okay. time, but Oops, I, I forgot. But I don't know, like okay. somehow, that's right. Somehow yeah. okay. he kind of died. Like I don't know if he felt the same frustration as us or what. Like somehow he kind of was just like, like just neutrally navigated. I think while he probably we got heated. He probably was already uh, not feeling me. So yeah, if, yeah. if I was in conflict with someone else and he was out of it, yeah. he's like, "That's fine. Yeah, let them to have their 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 funk." Yeah. Um. So maybe that was what it was. And and to be honest, yeah. like I've had him out of my mind at that time. Yeah. And yeah. I was I was more fixated on this dude. Yeah. So where I'm basically leading to with Amsterdam was we basically end up on the streets of Amsterdam for the whole night with our the, luggage looking like some damn tourists looking like some tourists because we didn't we we found ourselves back in Amsterdam in a time where we had overlapped our time to where we either could get on the train or go we didn't make it in time. We ended up having to either go to a hotel for only four and a half it hours. It didn't make sense. It, it made didn't no make sense. And we barely had enough money. So we had to sleep on the streets, on the, on the stairs. I got a of, picture of us in a doorway sleeping. Uh, the doorway of, at the train station in Amsterdam. And what we had to do was we all butted ourselves. Me, Kem, Guess. We, no, Kem wasn't there. Uh, no, excuse um, me. Not, uh, me, uh, me, you, and Rex. Yeah, me, you, and Rex. Basically, <laughs> butt ourselves up to the side and... Rex didn't want to do it, but I said, be a man. And we put our backpacks and our luggage in front of our knees and huddled up like this because the wind and the cold was really yeah, strong. It was a cold freaking night. Really and it cold. made no sense to get a hotel because it's like, it's 11 PM and yeah. you can take the train at like five at five. Yeah. If I get a hotel, I'm going to oversleep and miss my exactly. flight. So it's just like, listen, yeah, it's not ideal. We got to just, we got to tough it out on the street with all our stuff. And it, it was cold man and it those cold, hours cold. felt long bitter cold i wasn't sleeping no it wasn't we, like in, and really i have didn't. a photo i have a photo and then i got a photo of me <laughs> at the airport later literally so tired i'm losing my mind i sat down in a little coin operated airplane like yeah. this in my face <laughs> i'm just like making like i was like you know but it was <clears throat> and we made it y'all yeah. we made it literally yeah. that was it was a cool last that trip. was our crazy harrowing journey adventure through europe as 3a and you know three angels and one devil and those was just some of the first insane things that happened and 
I'm just so happy to kind of like put this in a little package. It's a small <clears throat> picture book of what happened just so you can hear it, the story from directly from the people because this would have been lost to eternity. And this is why I wanted to get with my boy guest to put it together to let you see this. The best part about being with this man for 20 plus, uh, 25 years or so, we've had so many moments together with our families. As I'm here with my sons, my sons newly have, would you like to tell him? Yep. Uh, I'm going to add on. Uh, uh. So what were you about to say, Reza? You had said the... Uh... You had a question for Uncle Gas. What was exactly? What was it? Uh, yeah, uh, I would like to ask you, since my father, his children, which is me, and Cena, uh, he teaches them graffiti and uh, other stuff. So how is it with like your children? With my kids, uh. They dabbled a little bit in graffiti, and it was kind of like. Everybody thinks, you know, oh, my, my, you know, my kid's going to do graph, my kid's going to do graph. And uh, I, I want to say, like, right now, they're not, they don't do graffiti right now. Really? You know, um, they, they've seen, but I can already see that my youngest son mm -hmm. is kind of, what, although I haven't been taking them to paint and literally showing them hand over hand, here's how you do this, here's how you do that. They they get their daily dose of graffiti for me. It, it's graffiti is a part of their lives, whether they understand it or not. I mean, they know it's, it's all I talk about. It's what's in my home. It's where I bring, they've been on so many day flick missions with me. Like I've taken them into tunnels. I mean, they've been, they've been in the environment. They're not, it's right. not at a distance for them. Right, right, right. They've been next to me while painting. They have painted on a wall. I have taken them, and there were multiple times where they did their little, you know, I remember, you know, they brought their sketches. I have photos of their first, like, pieces, really? um, stuff that they've painted. So they painted with cans. I have uh, my oldest son's first piece mm -hmm. uh, was in 2020 when everybody was stuck at home. Right. And I just put up plywood in my yard. He was painting on plywood. And um, they, he actually, you know what? It's... They're, they're, they're in and out of it. He has a name. He picked the name Gasp. That's his name right now. Yes. I told him, like, yeah, there's probably a Gasp out there. He says, I don't know. It's whatever. He goes, Doesn't that's matter. he goes that's my name. I'm going to do it my way. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, you know, I actually, at my last batch of sticker, stickers, ordered him stickers, like the mini ones that I like, mm -hmm. and he puts those around. So, there, I see, like... They're just absorbing it by kind of being around it all the time. They see me drawing stuff. They see me painting stuff. They've been there. They've been in the tunnels. Um, and I see slowly, even in my like youngest son, I see him like, I can tell that not too far off, he's going to try it on his own. And when he really tries it, I know they're going to get hooked on it. At least my youngest son, I know that. Um, because he, he kind of, um, when he tries something, he likes it. It's like, it's kind of like myself. Like I'm very, I have a very compulsive personality. Like if I like something, it takes over my life. Okay. Whether it's grab or fishing or iced coffee, <laughs> like <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, going back to what we we're talking about before. It's the reason why I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't gamble. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't go to strip clubs. I never dip my toe into anything that I don't want to like too much that is going to end up potentially destroying my life. So I steer clear of the stuff that I don't want. And, you know, because of that, it's like I have a compulsive personality. And um, I don't know how I veered off on, no, yeah, the, on that, but it's like... No, it's, it's, it's kind of like landing an idea of why, you know, uh, you, you know, to bring your kids into it when you're already consumed with it yourself, yeah, you know, there's a there's a bit of a responsibility of having to go. Okay, I'm going to introduce this to my son. These are things that usually take me down a rabbit hole. Let me see if he even has an idea or 
contention about it. Matter of fact, you know, uh, I sometimes wonder, uh, well, let me say this. I think that a good portion of graffiti writers out there that have kids, they end up asking guys like us who are like veteran writers, but with children and stuff like that, yo, how do we do this? Yeah. Like, how do you guys do this yeah. with having kids? And the responsibility it is to uh, keep them, you know, on the up and up as your children, not being absent from their life and still being a top level graffiti writer. Right. Yeah. And I think I think what I was going to say was, um, I anticipate that like if it does catch their interest, um, they usually attack their interests with with a lot of intensity. And they, they just kind of, kind of like they go all in on it. So um, it's there, and I honestly think that when when they come to graph and and honestly, they're whether they're painting or not, I should be teaching them the foundations of it because it's no different than if I were to teach them basic drawing skills. Right, right. Like mm -hmm. what? Like I shouldn't, you know, and and I accept. Like, it's kind of like, in retrospect, I accept a little bit of fault for this, almost like a fumble, mm -hmm. where, oh, well, I don't want to push graph on them. But that's like saying, ah, uh, well, I'm not going to show them how to draw a spaceship because I don't want to push spaceships on them. <laughs> I don't want to push crayons on them because maybe they'll like pencils instead. It's kind of, you know, I'm the parent. I'm going to tell you what I think is of value to you. You know, it's like at least... You don't have to do this forever, but at least be exposed to this. Because my wife and I, we always um, place a high value on a, a variety of experiences in life. So you're not just a one-dimensional stooge that has no stories under your belt. You know, we try to travel all over the place. Try to, I try this, try that. Even if you don't like it a year from now, you know, when that comes up somewhere, you're like, yeah, I've been there, I've done that. Oh, I know about that. You know, um, so. Um, yeah, it's, 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 I think it's going to be, in, it's important that they kind of learn a little bit of everything and I should really expose them to, to what, to what's important to, to me and, you know, just, to give them the, give them the chance to experience it, at least have the, the opportunity to say, yes, I like this. No, I don't. But even still they're, they're better off from just having tried one more thing in their life, you know? Right, right. Yeah. At least they know more about their dad from it. Yeah. Like, because, why was my dad so all consumed by this art? Yeah, because it's not, it's not like a, graffiti is not a, a back burner topic in my house. Everything, like, all my clothes have paint on them. Lawn, there's, cat, there's fat caps in the laundry, in the washing machine. <laughs> there's, it's, Everything of how I operate is like if they get in the car, hold on, I gotta move the roller out of the way. If yeah, everything yeah. is graffiti, like their father is a graffiti writer, right? You know, can't change that. It just is, and it's not changing anytime soon. You know. Yeah. So um, you you do you feel like at the end of the day, no matter what you you know, you let them kind of like explore and all this kind of stuff like that. I think you may feel like if I don't at least let them understand what graph was about, then they would themselves miss out on a possible uh, avenue of exploration of expression. Absolutely. And, and honestly, I think about everywhere it's brought me and all the experiences it brought me, the friends it brought me, it's like, I don't know that I would have gotten that depth of involvement in life without graph. I mean, what the hell would I go to Amsterdam for? Yeah. What would I go to Germany for? Like, I, I, the thing is, it, you can go, you can travel the country, but you're going to literally just, you're going to scratch the surface as a tourist. Right. You're going to go to the bar, you're going to go here, you're going to snap a picture. When we get off the plane as writers, you get in there right you know it's like just a lot of a lot of opportunities came my way a lot of experiences and stories came my way from graffiti it's like graffiti is the tree trunk my whole life all the branches all the like it or not it all comes back right. to my involvement in graffiti
It's just not, it's not something I do anymore. It's just, let's, I, I don't care if it sounds corny, it's who I am. Right. You know what I mean? And you can't take that, you can't take that away because it kind of steers and, and um, it steers everything in how I operate, you know? Yeah, I wonder a lot of times how many like other writer parents like us kind of involve their kids or don't involve their kids. And that's why like as we're having this conversation with my two boys right here, they involve themselves in many aspects of things that I do. Yeah. And they had their own choice whether they could or couldn't. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little different than the other parents in the sense I'm like, nah, this is also our family tradition. Like we all break dance, yeah. you know, we all do graph, we all skateboard and stuff like that. Now, if you want to branch out once you've kind of like made your, you know, uh, um, the program has ran in you uh, of the way we do things, you can go and do something else down the line or whatever yeah. you want to do. It's all up to you at that point. But at least you'll know how to be a nice writer by the time you do that. Or a nice B boy. By the time you do that, you have you that. Stay. You have that in your quiver. Like yeah. You've done and no one can take. Once you know it, you can't unknow it. Like yeah. You have it. It's part of you. And they're gonna have to accept that. And the way I said, like a little bit of a of a of a, uh, of a heavy handed uh, parenting. But, but what a fantastic heavy handed thing to hand down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It it could be worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could have forced them to do some boring shit. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. There's plenty of boring I mean, shit to do. Being forced to, like, I'm gonna hold you hostage here. I'm gonna teach you how to do damn good graffiti and go out and have fun and go on adventures. If, <laughs> if my like, son, my son won a graffiti, I mean, a b boy battle. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, now we have to take a trip, drive all the way down to Miami. Yeah. I'm like, all right. It's great. Yeah. I can't wait to go see it because I'm an old b-boy. I'm interested in that. I'm a sh- I, f- I feel like that must be what it feels like for a lot of these uh, regular square dads that like played baseball and then after they got out of it, that kid played baseball. Yeah. The kid's pretty good. Oh, we're going to go to the finals. And got no problem. Yeah. You know, maybe that's the same thing. I think if he was into those things or if he was into something else too, I would, I would be like... But I think it's cool that, um, you know, we traveled for our own reasons. Yeah. I think it's really cool that something that he is doing and something that he accomplished is now steering the trip you have to take. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Now it's not like, hey, we're gonna go here because I picked this trip. His accomplishment mm-hmm. is is dictating your next adventure. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it's not just dad planning an adventure for his son. It's like, you know, these guys are going to do stuff and accomplish things that are going to say, hey, they're going to tell you where we need to go next Saturday. Right. I like that. Well, there's a, there's a, there's a bit of a, of a duty once they've achieved those things like that to carry the name. Yeah. You know, like I said to you earlier, I said, you know, have you heard, you know, Old Dirty Bastard rhyme? And yeah. have you heard Old Dirty Bastard Son rhyme? No. Mm, yeah. Not not a good uh, yeah. what do you call it? but then have you ever heard big pun rhyme and then have you heard of big pun son Chris Rivers rhyme his son is incredible so there's a certain level of 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 uh, duty just to carry on your father's name if you have if you have the interest or even the uh, want to do the the, the, the the activity that your father was into. If right. he was into rapping, yeah. and you like rapping, yeah. and like, have you ever heard Biggie Small's son rap? It's terrible, terrible. Yeah. And it's not that it's sad, it's just that that wasn't where it was at. Yeah. My sons ended up having that talent, yours might also. The, the, the real thing is, is whether they want to carry that legacy. And since you've been here, yeah. The boys have been officially put in 3A crew. Yes. Now they feel a certain level of duty. Yeah. <laughs> now we have a belief of born in it, not sworn in it. Yeah. They literally were born into the crew, but you have officially like... Said, yes. I, I, told, I told him <clears throat> when you guys were born, I was super pumped. And I said, I said, this is the beginning of the second, like second wave of 3a at least it's kind of like they're going to carry the torch right so you guys are down at birth but i coming down here 
been watching you guys, watching you guys progress at a rapid rate and wanted to, you guys were down, but I wanted to add, officially say, and not through a little stupid DM message. Like okay. I didn't believe in that. There's no, no way it, it's, uh, and contrary to like how many crews operate, there are some crews that are small. There's some crews that will put down anybody in passing just to spread that spread name it, yeah. as many places as they can. And that's never how we operated. Um, we always viewed 3A as a small group of guys um, that just kind of approached graffiti a certain way. Um, of course, there's kind of cert a few members over the years have kind of gone off their own way or haven't been pushing it as hard or just kind of like, you know, we don't really see eye to eye anymore. Um, but there are still core members, regardless who the core members are. Um, I still just kind of, I view my kind of approach to graffiti and what, how I think style should be done. Um, and just a, a way of approaching graph and having a high standard and not half-assing it and just putting everything into it. Um, that being said, I haven't put anybody into 3A in 13 years now. The last member that I put in was Bacon from Toronto. Shout out to Bacon. Bacon. The homie. Spot well-deserved. Yes, this guy is yeah. super cool, limitless talent. Love that guy. Style killer. Yes. Literally aerosol assassin. So he was the last guy I put in. It, it was maybe 14 years ago. So it's just to say, you know, I'm, I'm trying to basically illustrate the, the level of importance that I put in mm -hmm. to putting a member down. So I, I just want to be, kind of illustrate just how much it means to me to put you guys down because I don't do it every day. Right. I don't add people to 3A. It, the roster has stayed the same. It's been no vacancies. Right. Um, mainly because, not because I'm trying to keep a, it's not like seats in a car where there's no room. There's room. Yeah. I just, it's, I don't usually come across people that um, I feel are going to take my, what I feel. It's almost like, in my head, stuck, like I don't want to say stuck in the 90s, but like a 90s vibe and approach to graffiti where we just focused on what we did and I just wanted to find, I want to find people that are going to still kind of carry it on mm -hmm. the way that I think. It's kind of like when you lend, you hand someone your car keys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to be nervous while they're gone? <laughs> or are you comfortable that they're going to bring your car back with in gas one in it? piece. One piece, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I feel very comfortable putting you guys down because I see you guys like are doing it, man. Like you guys love it. You work hard on your styles. You put, you're not doing some bullshit styles. It's like focus on your style first, strong letters. And I know you guys are going to absolutely just freaking take off you know so it's an honor an honor to to put you guys in you know no it's been an honor my brother that you put my sons down officially you yeah. know that's something that it's a uh, it's deep to us because it's something we carried for so so long and believed in so so much now yeah. for our children to be a part of that it's a it's a great thing and a beautiful thing and that's why i feel so proud that they got to meet you officially yeah. like this. They met you before when they were babies, but yeah. now like yeah. officially uh, meet you. And moreover, this particular meeting of minds and this moment to have this conversation on this podcast, it was a really important thing for me and the boys to actually do this. So, yeah. bro, guess of 3A, my brother, 25 years and many, many more. Yeah. I hope to have way more conversations with you i would love to, i would love to come back first podcast ever like i told you i've turned down plenty i've turned yeah. out i turned out all of them yeah You've I know. never nobody out there has heard me on a podcast i never i never more wanted to speak to a certain somebody to be part of this particular thing than you because i'm like this guy don't talk to nobody but yeah. i know i know you have 
an incredible story that these people don't know anything about. I know them because yeah. I usually <laughs> ran around with you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, man, I, know, I need to make yeah. sure that this man is at least getting some of this stuff out there via with people who know him and care about him yeah. like I do. And I'm like, nah, I can't let you go without this one. Yeah. Because... And I'm hoping to have more chapters. Listen, you know, we've both been busy working, mm -hmm. raising families. <laughs> raising families the right the way. Right way yeah. It's kept me for a good number of years close to home base. Yeah. But you know, I'm hoping to come down here a little bit more regularly, mm -hmm. more do more chapters. I don't care if it's online, if we do them here, but uh we will do it again. Yeah. And maybe even we'll might have uh a road trip and then do it out there with you yeah and maybe we'll add like a couple extra people that uh might have been part of the uh the the action back then yeah that might add a certain perspective that we think is uh interesting yeah, yeah. so bro all right my man my man yeah. my man see i was able to catch him i was able to catch him see you yeah. wouldn't miss it yeah what 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 it's just the maximum you really get to see who is your friend as elementary they want us all gone eventually as elementary they want us all gone eventually